All right, we know how this goes. Done plenty of these capes now, so this is the recommended gear. Um, I really don't recommend anything else other than this. You can downgrade like things to bee gloves. You can take a Ring of Suffering if you don't have the ability to get a Ring of the Gods. Um, Devouts are incredibly powerful. Max cape, max cape and Ring of the Gods is also fine if you have a Max Cape. Ellie is good if you can get one, otherwise it doesn't really matter. Obviously if you have an Ellie you could probably better spend it on a Tebow or wait till you got a Tebow. Um, but the rest of the gear is about right. You can, have, you can take 5 brews, up all the way up to 7 brews, but I don't recommend more than that. You can also drop 1 Bastion if you want to, if you really need the space. Uh, things like Justy, things like Eldritch, Lightbearer, these are all useless noob trap items, they will not help you. Only way you can do cape effectively is to learn how to solve stuff, and learn a few basic tips and tricks and things. So, let's get started. Uh, the other run today is gonna be a... Uh, it's gonna be a sub-65 Bofa run, because that's the one I don't have on the YouTube today, so we'll pop up and go with a very similar setup into the sub-65. Um, I don't really know how fast I have to play, probably not that fast, but I will have to use chins to make life easier, so I'll probably bring chins and just like play nice and simple stuff. So there's our gear, tons of restore, infinite prayer. Let's go. Missouri or Justy? Missouri. I think you understand Bookstrat. Bookstrat's really, really good once you get it, yeah. Once you get it, super easy. Right, so we're going to drop a couple of potions near Pillar to make space for things. Our starting point is going to be anywhere around here. Early waves, we send one barrage and then switch to our range gear and our proper tech gear. We can put the sea shield to the side for now. And if you're wondering how NPCs die quickly, it's Entity Hider. Highly recommend it for Inferno. And any of these waves, we start roughly around here. But these early waves, we don't have to be too scared, so we're going to barrage one of the nibblers, switch to our gear, and then go aggress stuff, just attack stuff. If you want to, you can just keep your prayer on and attack, or you can use your quick prayers, like so, if you know how to one tick. Doesn't really matter. You can also lazy flick. There's plenty of flicks, and I'll showcase them all. Zarak vans, they're decent, yeah, they don't matter too much. Uh, one barrage here. You don't need augury ever for nibblers. The only reason you use it is defense. And if you had a if you had a decent barrage, then obviously switch into your range gear. This is how you finish nibblers. You never barrage more than once if you have to. The blobs, the way we're gonna work with them is pretty simple. So at the start of the wave you switch your prayer away if they see you. And when this hits you, you switch your prayer. That's how you deal with blobs. You don't have to know any tech timing, anything like that. This is all you gotta know. If you're far away from a blob, this will work all the time. And if you're close to a blob, say about here, once the blob attacks me, I wait a second and then I switch my prayers. I wait a second, and then I switch my prayers. And that's all you have to know to deal with blobs. That's it. So it hits me, wait a second, switch prayers, and then if he just attacked you, you can turn your prayer off and move some. You don't have to know tick timings, you don't have to know anything. That's how, that's how you deal with blobs. There are different positions to deal with blobs. The most common one, the best one, is on pillar like this. This is north pillar, and you have to kill it from here or anywhere further back. And once you do this, you have to stand still and pray range. And this will allow them to stay in a nice little format. And from here you can barrage them zero damage. Um, a lot of the time the major won't be affected, and so you have to pray mage. But in this case, everything is still alive and the range is there, so we just clean up. So, range pray. One barrage, and let's hide behind the pillar. You're still gonna flick mage, still gonna flick mage just in case. But let's just hide for a second and let everything drag in. In these early waves, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this tile here. This is our bat safe spot. And we're going to flick the blob. I'm going to take some hits on purpose here. I want to showcase a few things. I'm going to bring the blob closer. Take some hits so Take some hits while I do this. This is one of the most important things you need to know when doing a first game. Assuming I get hit, that'd be nice. A bit harder. Turns out blobs don't do that much damage, who would have thought? They really don't do much damage. You guys are dying to blobs? Gotta be kidding me. You sure you guys are dying to blobs? Okay, I really need to take some damage now. That's better. Okay, we kill our blob. And if you want to gain HP in the Inferno, what you do is you come all the way back and stand here. 
You keep the line of sight, you don't run away from it. You make sure it's in this formation. Take off any negatives you might have, if you want to. Range an augury, blood barrage either of these two guys in quick succession, and then see if they die. So like, you can go again, and this guy's not dead, so I can pray melee for it, and keep barraging. And I can just keep going, keep going, keep going. And we're going all the way up to 94 HP. This is called a phantom, to a phantom barrage, and it will give you a huge amount of HP for free. You have to manually cast this. Let's flick the blob, and let's attack the bat. Now we can kill the nibbler while I'm flicking the blob. I can kill all of these guys while flicking the blob, and notice I put on Rigor there to kill the bat. Now let's go and kill this bat. This is also a bat safe spot, which is quite nice. I forgot to flick that, but that's fine. And we're just getting rid of stuff while it's safe spotted, because it's nice and easy. And now we're going to drag this blob in. If you want to fight blobs in the open, that's fine, but you've got to go and stand next to them. But dealing with blobs on North Pillar is your, like, safety net, and it's what you need to start doing if you want to make the waves consistent. For blobs, on the, uh, for blobs on the east side, we kill it from the south side, instead of this side over here. If you kill it from the north side, it will not line up like this. In the same way, if I stand back here, I can do two manual casts in quick succession and get a lot of HP, but from close range I can just Ice Barrage and have done with it. For a low XP drop, send one more, and then switch to your proper gear and start attacking normally. This guy is not frozen, so he can unstick, which means if this guy dies I have to pray mage. And now you can attack him. Okay. Whenever we get close to 50 restore, 50, uh, 50 prayer, sip a restore. Okay, let's start flicking this blob. And because if we go around this side we have to deal with the blob anyway, we may as well just go and attack this guy. Now this is a bit of a weird space. For this guy you're going to stand next to him here. If I take one more step down, it's not bad, but I'm going to get into a position where this guy can see me, so... It doesn't really matter if he comes around, but yeah. For this blob, you can't kill him from that side, it doesn't do anything. You can do the same sort of thing. But this is a preset position, you're going to start here and move in. We move in, switch our gear, one barrage on the middle one, and switch to our tank gear. This guy is stuck, now you can attack the major. NPCs will get stuck on the side of pillars like this. To free them, you have to take a step back, and now you can attack. If I attack him from here, I'll get dragged out. Two blobs means the wave collapses, and it's double nibblers. I don't have to bother with anything, I can come up and close, I can get really aggressive and not worry. And now we're on to melee. This is a singular melee, so I can just stand still and pray melee. There's no point hiding on the pillar, it's just going to slow us down. And let's go and click it. You might be on your first cape, but for singular NPCs like this, or same style NPCs, there's no reason to back off. So we're building little things over time. Learning how to deal with blobs, learning how to set them up. And then we're going to combine that with other methods to trap the melee, and other flicks, and other all sorts of things. So, now we've got our bat in the place, so let's play range. Let's go hide behind the pillar. This bat is now behind the pillar, so we can kill the melee. There's nibbles on my pillar. I don't really care about West Pillar, but I can use some rigor to speed up the kill. I can flick rigor, you can leave it on if you want, it doesn't matter. If you can save prayer, sure, save prayer. And now I'm going to kill the bat. I'm going to walk over to the nibblers. Kodai, Occult, one barrage. Don't do the top, there's no point. And then finish up with blowpipe. Back on pillar, one barrage, and this melee is really far away, so let's just go and attack the bats. And now, notice that if I'm standing anywhere on these six tiles, the melee can't get to me. It's stuck on the pillar. If I take one more step out, he's going to come round. But what that means is that this tile here, any of these tiles here, is completely safe to melees, unless they spawn over here or over here. And that makes it very easy if you just stand still on one of these tiles to solve waves. So here's an example, assuming the melee doesn't spawn over there. It does, okay. In this case, the blob is, is stuck. So let's just attack the melee. I don't need to care about these nibblers, they don't matter. Let's use rigor to speed this up. I will go and save the pillar, but first I need to kill the melee. We're not going to go nibbler chase. And all we're doing is we're flicking rigor to speed up the kill. When it's dead, now I can put on my gear, send a barrage, and flick the blob. Take off Rigor. Making sure it's dead. Okay. Now let's do this blob the correct way, come back on pillar, and attack it from this side. When 
opponent dies, we step up close, pray mage, attack the middle one. Not a very good barrage, let's do one more. That's a bit better, now we can switch gear. Doesn't matter which one you kill, just kill one of them and pray accordingly. Prayer is getting low, let's use another dose. One barrage, and when this blob stops moving, I flick my prayers. Now, that's how you know it's seen you. And all we're doing is we're flicking the blob, you don't have to worry about the bat. Let the attack hit you, then change your prayer. That's the bat attack. Attack hits me, change my prayer. Attack hits me. Oh, let's attack it one more time. Change my prayer. Wait for one more blob attack. Attack hits me, change my prayer, come round the pillar. So you can always move after that attack hits you. And now look, this blob has pulled into a really nice position. So we might be dealing with one more complex NPC, but at the end of a wave it tends to collapse back down into what we can call like a basic position. And now we can just stand still, one barrage, and I'm 91 HP, and maybe one more since that was not bad. There's 99, great. Let's pray mage and go and attack. These early waves don't matter too much if you have like, let's say 90 HP, but later on we're going to want to stay 99 all the time. One barrage, and let's just sit still for a second. Maybe let's wait for the blob to stop moving and then start flicking the blob, while we use Rigor to kill the bats. So the bats have done practically nothing. Let that hit me, and now I can go around the pillar. Same again. And so this situation is actually almost identical to the last wave, and all I've done is maybe take out two bats in a rapid way. If I took damage from the bats, I can heal from the blob because it's the last thing alive. Great. And we know how to do that. I'll showcase it again. Let the attack hit me, wait a second, flick my prayers. Let's go all the way back, praying range. And if you want to heal, manual cast, block barrage like this twice in a row. And now pray mage, this guy's going to come around the pillar. And he's, there's the attack, so we've got range pray off. And that will heal us really nicely. Okay, let's start flicking this blob. And now this blob is going to see me, so let's run away. Let's just run away. Now I've only got one blob to deal with, and I can flick him. Now I want to get this melee round the pillar, how do I do that? Well, here's one way. If you're on the edge here, you can take a step out, then in. You might take one hit from the blob, but that's okay. This guy's going to attack me, but that's fine. Nibbler on the pillar? Okay, let's speed things up with Ruger. The melee's dug. Let's go attack this Nibbler. I can come round this side of the pillar. And I'm just flicking the blob, but they happen to be on the nice timing, so that's great. If they weren't, maybe I kill it and then come back around. Okay, this guy's still a problem. Let's go and attack this guy instead. Now I have to start flicking this blob instead. So we're just dealing with one NPC at a time. That little melee thing is a nice little trick, you can add it to the arsenal. The more tips and tricks like that you have, the easier waves will be. There's the one good barrage, let's pray melee now, and good. We're not going to go this side, we're going to kill it from the south side which sets it up much nicer, makes it zero damage. And so all these little things, tips and tricks of the blobs, you can just apply them non-stop now. Pray range, stand still, one barrage, not bad, let's go to our proper gear, and pray mage to clean up. Good. Let's drink more prayer, we're low. Now we can pray melee because it's been two blobs, which means we're collapsing into a melee. Now I can finish off the nibbers early because these guys are coming towards me and there's two melees which I can pray against, so this is fine. North pillar is very, very easy to protect. And now we're not going to be running away to pillar, you don't need to pray for it, you got infinite prayer. Just chill and click boss. And so this standard way of doing things has got us to ranger with practically zero damage taken, nice and easy. And it doesn't really change for the rest of the game. Until you get to ranger a major, then the fun begins. So now it's a ranger, just pray range. Oh, it's double nibbles actually, I lie. Decent barrage. Let's clean up the one on the pillar first, and then go for the frozen ones. Great. So, this is only a ranger again, so we just pray range. One barrage. Good barrage, let's go attack it. No need to be afraid. If you want to speed up the kill, again, you can flick rigor, or you can one tick if you're capable, like so. Doing this will speed up the cape a lot and uh, save a lot of prayers, so it's worth doing if you can do. Back on pillar, one barrage, and uh, it's just range NPCs, let's kill them. I'm going to move towards this nibbler, and I can practice my blowpipe walk while doing it. 
whenever you have like singular rangers you can practice, which is uh, simply attack, move, attack, move, attack, move. This loses no ticks on the blowpipe and allows me to move while uh, attacking. This is the thing you have to learn when you want to do healers at Zuck. It's quite easy to do, but it takes some practice. So take the time when you're on low waves like this to mess around and get a feel for the mechanics. Okay, let's go back on pillar. So we're trying to keep things very standard. Camera angle is like nice and wide, we can see the whole field. One barrage, and again, it's just ranged NPCs, so let's not be afraid. Let's go click stuff and kill it. Just click in everything. Kill it all off. One ticking where we can do. Otherwise, just flick rigor like this. You can also just flick the ranger. Doesn't matter how you want to do it. But saving some pro is good habit, slash good practice. Alright, ranger and blob. This is the first interesting wave. So we've got a prey range to start with, and if in doubt we're going to prey range. Let's hide from the blob. Get away from the blob. Come around the pillar. Get away from it. Okay, now let's get ready to come around this side of the pillar when the blob gets closer. Wait for the ranger to attack, then go. And remember, we've got to stand up, up next to it when it dies. Gonna pray mage for these guys as well. You're quite weak to magic and crystal armor. And now this melee's frozen. I can take a step back and I can't get hit. I'm still praying magic though. And now range coming around the pillar. With regards to blowpipe specs, you want to keep hold of them. You can use one occasionally, but probably best to hold on to two for uh, waves that are kind of throwing you off. Use more Restore. Keep using Restore. One Barrage, and let's flick the blob, because these guys are stuck. We can attack the bat and keep flicking the blob. I can even Bofa this guy from here. It's a nice use of Bofa. Let's come around the pillar. So now we can kill this ranger. And we don't have to be worried about this guy at all. This Nidla just doesn't matter. Now the ranger's dead, let's take Rigor off and come round to this blob and flick it. We can even go up and bow for this. It's a nice benefit of having bow for once again. Still gotta remember to flick the blob. And when we kill it, come back to this tile here. Don't kill it like up here. Come back to the starting position. We're 90 HP, so let's send a blood barrage. That's 96. Maybe one more with augury? 99. And now remember to pray mage at the end here so you don't take damage. There we go. No TJ. It's warm, but it's not that horrible. One barrage, and then just stand still. Okay, the blob is stuck. Let's go attack the bats. I'll bow for this when it gets a bit closer, but I'm gonna kill the bats first. Bats are still a priority. Nibblers are just, they do not matter. Okay, now I can attack it with both of them. Take a rigor off, and one more attack. Go around the pillar. For this guy, same as before. We've gotta come and stand close. Barrage the middle one, and switch to your tank gear. Okay. Here's the example. If I try and attack this guy, I'll be dragged around the pillar. Like that. If I take a step back, I can attack it directly. So you've got to be careful with stuff that's stuck like that. You can't just attack it for free. Good. Back to our starting tile. We're trying to keep things really consistent. One barrage, and let's run away. Let's just run away. Now I can flick this guy alone. Doesn't matter if that hits me. And I can kill it. Ignore the nibble. Does not matter. Stand next to it. Barrage. Switch to our proper gear. And let's pray against this one. And remember, we've got to take a step back, and now we can attack it. Okay. Nibble is going to the pillar. Am I concerned? No. We're going to alternate here. So we wait for the ranger attack and then start, or do a whole cycle, then alternate. This is the worst way to do it, but it's consistent. You take a ranger attack, and then begin on the next one. You'll take one blob attack like that. Keep alternating, when it dies, now I can barrage. And I'm just protecting against ranger, don't have to pray mage for this guy. And now I can use bofa or run up to this with blowpipe and finish it off. My pillar's barely taking any damage, and I don't really need it anyway. We're 78 HP, let's put Rigor on on one pipe spec. Got 96. Okay, cool. Teaching stream on level 39. Mm. 
Can I sub Afsal in for that one? Okay, one barrage. This melee is going to get to me because it spawned in one of the two positions that it can do. Let's isolate the ranger and pray melee. And attack the melee. Again, nibbler on the pillar. Does not matter. A nice little trick if the melee is on this position. You can come round these two tiles. And then take a step up. And you can trap it. This is another one of those little melee tricks. There's a plenty to learn. The more you have, the easier the ways to become. Let's go and attack this nibbler again. And our pillar again has used up a little bit of its HP, but that's completely fine. These pillars are useful for just... Th this south pillar should die before wave 50, and that's a good thing. South pillar will throw you off if it's there post 50. So we're really not worried about it. We're letting its HP just die for the sake of the run. And we're keeping north pillar really healthy. More, more restore. Back on the pillar, same starting position. One barrage, and let's just sit still for a second and have a think. Everything seems trapped. We know we can kill bats quickly. Let's do that. And let's just see what happens with the melee. So it spawned all the way up there, but it comes and gets stuck behind, and now it's just going to sit on the pillar. I don't have to use any prayer. I can even bow for this if I don't want to get too close to it. Maybe back on the melee. I want to keep control of it, though. I don't want it to dig. So every now and then, it might take a hit. And as we get to the later waves, trying to control the melee and take hits like that will become a lot more uh, common occurrence. If we're ever low at any point, we're just going to brew, put on rigor, blowpipe spec, try kill something, is usually the way. One barrage, and uh, proper gear on. There's only two bats, I'm going to get rid of the one on the pillar first, and then I can kill the bats. Maybe I can kill the nibble now. And now I want to isolate the ranger, so waiting for the attack. Go around pray melee. And let this guy drag in. Lovely. Okay. Bit more complex. Melee, Blob, and Ranger. One Barrage? Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to click this guy, and we're going to pray melee. And I'm just going to sit here. Now the Blob might do a bit of damage, but the Blob really does not out-DPS you versus the melee. And this is how you solve the wave. Done. Now I'm going to start flicking the Blob. Attack hits me, switch prone. Maybe I can go after these nibblers as well. That's it. You take, like, no damage. Uh, let's go kill the blob now. For this guy, you want to stand here when you kill it. Otherwise, the ranger's gonna see me. You can see based on the pillar. And if you're ever low, you can always blood barrage blobs to get a bit more HP off. Great. There are other solutions to that wave. But that's your basic solution. Put on damage gear, put on rigor, and kill something. Let's use another blowpipe spec. Not great, okay. So now we're about, you, you know, like you 80 HP. Pizza with those arms. That's actually, uh, oh, I should probably put on a blood barrage here. Maybe you're 75 HP, maybe you're 80 HP, but now you want to start healing a little bit more. So let's be a bit more careful. More restore. Acte, thank you for the sub. Many, many thanks. One barrage, and let's hide. Let's load, there's loads of stuff up there, let's just hide. Trade melee, and attack. Um, if you stand on this corner, often or not, this large NPC is going to walk around and get stuck on this line, and they're going to come across. If I took a step in while attacking the melee, all these guys would shuffle across, and he would also shuffle across. Now, we know this is a pillar safe spot, so that's great. But I want to get that nibbler, so we're going to come all the way back to the nibbler safe spot, and I'm either going to barrage or bow for the nibbler, which you can do from here. I can't do it from here, you have to be all the way back. Now, that's blowpipe fill. And if I was ever low during that fight with the melee and the blob, I can blow height spec twice, and I can use brute. But you want to always DPS. Okay, blob on the bat. You can, if you want to, kill the bat by standing here. It's a three-tile NPC, so you have a one-tile distance away from its melee. One barrage, and it's a pretty good one, so let's switch our gear. 
Make sure this guy's dead, and then go for this guy, Praying Mage. Cool. One barrage, and everything is up there, so let's run behind the pillar. There's a bat on me, let's kill this bat quickly. And uh, here's the thing. This guy's going to slide along again because I didn't take a step in. Sometimes you want this, sometimes you don't, but you can control it. Now, I've got some, I've got some options here. If I kill this blob, that's fine, but it's in a bit of a weird spot. If I stay still, the melee eventually is going to dig. We can do a bit of both. So we can go out, we have to take a step back to attack it. And I'm not too worried about these bloblets when they spawn because the melee is about to dig. But let's just uh, put on our proper gear, do one barrage, and then maybe pray melee. Turns out that killed it, so great. If this was a larger NPC, like a major, I could I could walk here and re-corner trap it, so it's still in this position. Oh. I could walk out and it would still be stuck here, which is good. For the melee, I'm not going to click it, I'm going to let it wiggle out, and then I'm going to attack it. Where can you see that? Uh, you can type into Google Afzal 39 Combat Inferno. Or if you want to see a 40, you can type in Exact 40 Combat Inferno. It's all on YouTube though. All right, took a bit of damage from a mistake, so let's try and get some back. Put Rigor on. After the bat dies, I can try and blowpipe spec the Ranger. Not great. Now let's heal. Let's get to say 90 HP is a safe number at this point. There's 88, one more. There you go, 95 is plenty. So we're just topping up on waves. You don't have to get to 99, but we're just topping up. When we get to 50, we are going to get to 99 every time. We can start picking up restores when we have space as well, and uh, use one more because we're low. One barrage, and let's go behind the pillar. We got two blobs, what do we do? Let's kill one, rigor on, and try and flick them as best you can. Doesn't matter which one you do, let's just kill one. Get close, barrage here, and try and flick this guy. I can even send a blob barrage if I want to. Take a step back, and attack this guy. And now, what trick do we use to get this guy close? Well, okay, we got nibblers on the pillar, so let's flick the blob. We can now barrage this, wait for the attack to hit us, then switch. There we go. This melee is going to dig. Where do I want to go? Over here. Let's put Rigor on and alternate based on the Ranger. Bit of a slow wave. It would have been better that wave to formulate a plan to deal with the melee, or just kill stuff faster. Now we can look at the blob. Keep alternating until it attacks. There's the attack, now we can stop. Wait for it to hit us, and then go here. Let's get ready to go around the pillar, and deal with this guy. He might attack me one more time, it doesn't really matter. Cool. This wave probably would kill a lot of people, but like, you can brew, you can blow pipes back. I didn't get low enough to warrant doing it. If you're a noob and you first cape, maybe do it on level, on wait on, you know, like HP 70. Have an idea of when you want to use your resources. But the idea there, stand here, kill something, just get rid of it. And when the melee digs, you know to come around this side. And you're all good. So we're low HP. Take off our gear, move back. Augreon, one barrage, two barrage. 71 HP, they all dead. 82. Plenty. For, late, for ways where you have really low HP, you can blood barrage like this. I'm gonna go twice, so there's 99. And uh, we know from experience, this wave is gonna stack up. This guy might get stuck. Okay, he's fine. So we can kill these guys now. Uh, this will be on VOD and on YouTube as well. Let's use more restore and pick up these guys. There we go. We're just leaving a space in case you want to do takeoffs and stuff. This is fine though. We can also showcase some more melee trickery. When this guy digs, if we're standing anywhere over here, we just come around the corner, praying range. And this spot's usually safe. If it notices that it's like wiggled around, you can drag melees down the pillar like this. So they'll always get stuck. And it's the reverse. If they're on this side, come over here. If they're here, come over here. These things you'll have to learn. But you can play around. You can get to a wave with a melee on and play with them for like 10 minutes, get a feel for it. And when you go into a proper run, you're not going to be too worried when it digs on you, because you'll know where to go. So maybe one problematic maybe maybe one problematic wave solved by like just attacking stuff. And now we're on to double ranger. 
So for the waves with similar NPCs, we can just chill and attack. Switch the blowpipe to clear up. And uh, we don't have to be worried about anything. Let's just go click these guys. We can do some tactics and run this way to draw that guy closer. Practice the blowpipe walking while we're doing it, maybe. Amazing, amazing. So we're at major with about 30 minutes in. That's about right for this kind of thing. Cool. Again, two big ranges means the wave is collapsing, which means nibblers. One barrage. Switch to the proper gear and attack. Now we have Major, so we gotta start praying magic. One barrage and switch to our proper gear. We can attack this, there's only just a Major on the field, so let's go click him. Now for Majors you can practically AFK them with both run. Uh, you can definitely flick some Rigor, you can flick some Mage Prey. But this is your chill time for a lot of the waves now. But you know, get some practice in. If we look at our prayer, seven minutes remaining. So you get about eight minutes per dose of per eight minutes per restore potion. So let's say 15 minutes for two. So 15, 30, 45, one hour, hour 15, hour and a half. Basically, I can sit here for like 90 odd minutes from now and have enough restore to complete the run. And we're going to do the cape in under 90 minutes, which means I can camp my prayer permanently. We can do this trick for other NPCs. We can take a step out and in to drag them around the pillar. And now we can kill it from the safety of behind the pillar. This is just a nice trick for bats and melees. And uh, now, because it's just a major, I can clean up this nibbler. And then attack it. What NPCs should you be using Tebow and Bofa? Um, you can, it's, it's actually pretty good on melee. Whenever, okay, whenever, whenever anything respawns, you can just kill it. Both is really good at this. Both is really good for this. But yeah, um, both of us is thing. Tebow for Tebow or both for majors, I believe. Uh, both for melees is also quite good, but blowpipe has the added benefit of being able to spec it, so it's a bit more versatile. But yeah, I'm, I'm literally just going to AFK every single major. It just it doesn't matter. And that is the power of Ring of the Gods and Devout Boots. You just don't have to flip. Doesn't matter. And if you do flick all that much better for you, you'll get a bit more prey. Gotta keep using Restore though. Cool. So across the 90 minute cape there are downtimes like this where you don't even use prey. One barrage and prop go to our proper gear. Let's put Rigor on, I want to clean up these things quickly, get the nibblers off the pillar, and then get on the bat. Just kill the bat. Pray magic and kill the bat. And then Bofa on this guy, Pray magic. Lovely. Nice and simple. So Devout Boots is worth losing the plus two range from Pegasian Boots? Yes. Pegasian Boots are incredibly bad. Um, they do essentially nothing. Bofa and Pipe about 2% DPS of each other. Yeah, that, that's why it doesn't really matter. Like, Bofa might be slightly better, but it's so slight it makes no difference. So a bit of flicking here and there. You can flick however you want. And we can even use this bat safe spot here to kill this guy. Wow, both are good. You can definitely just both of bats, it's completely fine. Okay, one barrage. Let's just run away. Everything is far south, let it drag in, give it time. No reason to go and be aggressive on that. Let's get our gear ready, and we can alternate. So again, we can pray magic, do one full cycle of the measure, then catch the then catch the cycle, or we can alternate immediately. Alternating immediately looks like this. So if you can do this, this is great. And if you're doing it not quite efficiently, then you can take a hit. You can do it like this. Take a hit from the blob, 
and then start now. It was a zero anyway. Either way, you get the cycle set. Oh, I read you. So we keep alternating once the major dies, wait for the blob attack, now we go behind the pillar. Take off your prayer if you want to. Let it pull into the normal position and begin attacking. So even, even for the major waves and as things stack up more, we still end with a blob like this. Which means we can still heal from back here if we need to. At this point, I don't need to reiterate the basics. Switch into the proper gear, go hit the major, that's all it's going to be. One barrage, and again, let's just run behind the pillar. Everything is up there, one attack from the blob, not to worry about. Let's pray for the bat, and get rid of it quickly. Now for nibblers that are stuck in the center of the room, often you can take a step back, and then you can barrage them. I would always click the ground again like that, just in case you get dragged out. And always pray magic just in case as well. Okay, so we can still, again, this is how we protect North Pillar. It's very easy to. Okay. Now we can do the same thing. This doesn't change. The blob does not exist when alternating. So we can go and attack the Major and alternate. And that's that. Bob attacks me, now I can stop alternating. And in this case, I'm in the right position already, so I'm just going to chill and attack it. Let's use some more restore. Ooh, didn't quite uh, commit there, so I might take some damage, but that's fine. One barrage, and let's go behind the pillar, because there's a lot of stuff up here. Major is attacking me, which means i got to pull it closer. I can pull it closer by waiting for the attack, moving around the pillar, and letting it come towards me while killing the bats. Doesn't matter if the blob hits me. Now the mage is close enough, let's go around the pillar, pray magic, and attack it. Uh, I'm not worried about the nibbler at all, I'm just going to attack the major. If I want to speed things up, I can use rigor. So if I am worried about my pillar, instead of nibbler chasing, I kill the major faster. And now you see my hits are much better. Pillar is still 50%, and I want it to die fairly soon. You want your pillar gone by wave 50. Otherwise it will cause problems when NPCs come around it and can see you. Okay, now let's flick the blob from the bat safe spot and kill the bats. This guy I'm just going to walk towards and attack it. In fact, if you're playing uh, a bit faster or you want to be a bit more confident with waves, maybe you can take some damage, because we know how to heal it from the blobs. Or if you uh, want to get a bit more used to it. Let's bring him back, by the way. If you want to get a bit more sort of comfortable healing, take the damage actually since we're home. You can always remind yourself of how to do it. Just take a hit or two, completely fine. Well, don't take a hit, but like practice this. So one barrage, two barrage, get the third one ready. I can even cast this and then pray magic. And I'm 84 HP, which is okay. We can finish with blowpipe. And the next wave I can barrage in the middle. Let's use more restore. One barrage, and I gotta flick this guy because everything is safe spotted. And all I'm doing is standing still. Now, we can flick this blob very comfortably, wait for the attack, and then pray. And what we're gonna do is get ready to attack the major. So let's get ready, come over here, and when this attack hits me, I can put on mage brain. And now, I can begin alternating. And instead of dealing with the blob and killing it, I can just attack the major, and now it can't be respawned. Any explanations on why using uh, North instead of South? It just ends up being better overall. The way NPCs path, um, the simplicity of it, easier sort of everything. 
it's not perfect perfect um south pillar has like one or two advantages but it's not bad now we can corner trap this blob I keep i'm still praying it against this guy but i can corner trap it if i want if i want a second to think about stuff now i want to drag this guy closer and not deal with him maybe let's path over here let's just run up and now i can just deal with this guy on his own while this guy drags in if you're dealing with a blob in the open you want to stand next to it when it dies this is to keep all three of the mini blobs together, like this. And now I can barrage them. Switch to my gear, and I should take minimal damage. For this guy, we attack him from the other side. Same as always. Yo, Peppy, that's awesome, man. Keep it up. Learn how to keep calm? Yeah, it's the biggest skill for sure. And it's not one that you can easily learn. One barrage, switch to our gear. Dead. Great. Get back on the pillar and pray magic. Okay, let's just chill for a second. This guy's gonna get stuck, we know this, because he didn't spawn here and he didn't spawn here. I can bow for him from far away and then maybe blow pipe him when up close. So this is just chill. And if you want to start learning how to keep the melee in check during waves, you wait for the major attack and step in. Take a hit and move back. If you're doing that kind of tactic, bow for might be even better because you lose less ticks. And you have a big window to do that. So both ring melees, especially when you're trying to keep track of them like that, can be very good to not lose things. Let's let the Major drag in a bit, but not too much because it doesn't really matter where it is, we just attack it. And as we get through to some of the later waves, we're going to have to start adding that to the repertoire. So every time you have a Major and a melee, and you want to keep the melee in place, just consider going and taking a hit, and it's going to be okay. This guy's on the pillar. We've got to be careful to not let him round. If I want to let him round, I can also step out and then back up here. If I stay here, he will see me. If I step out and in, he now comes around the pillar. So if I want to again keep control of him, I can do. Let's stay in melee range and practice flipping. This stops him from digging and wasting more of our time. Cool. Proper gear on. Sip a restore. One barrage, and let's just chill for a second. We can even bow for this bat, we can switch to bow for an attacker for a free hit. Gotta pray magic, so let's use Rigger to clean this up. Okay, now let's go around the pillar and let this guy drag in. Now, I don't really want to kill this in case it gets respawned. So we can wait for the attack, and then move around the pillar, praying mage. Remember, you've got to come here and not here, otherwise you're going to be on the edge and he can see you. And now we can practice taking hits from the melee. Yeah, it resets the timer, that's the idea. So we wait for the attack, click and then pray, and then come back. And this will keep him in place. There's one other tactic I want to showcase for the melee, and that is going to be the corner trap. So this is the other useful thing you need to know as a first caper, which not many people do know, but it's super useful. You simply take one step out from the pillar whenever there's something on the pillar, and we're going to take a diagonal step when he digs. It's the same as if I was standing here and go around the pillar, Except it's, I'm just going like this. So one diagonal step, like this. And he stays above it. And what we're doing is we're using the pillar, we're using the major as a pillar. And you can do this with any NPC. So a lot of the time you'll have a melee you can't really control, and you can preset a dig spot for him, like this. Takes a bit of getting used to, but as a first caper, very valuable. Gotta pray melee after it dies though, to make space and uh, to, to allow him to like not hit you. That is also one of the super effective ways to control melees. Right, one barrage, gear on, let's kill this guy with rigor, get rid of him, and let's put range prey on for the bat, and uh, let's go around and kill the major with prayer on. This guy's gonna come around the pillar, and that's fine, he's gonna get stuck, we know this is a corner safe spot. What we can do to make this a bit easier for us to control him is to take a step down, and remember we can come like even more down, he's still on the pillar, maybe one more. If we do another step, he's gonna be free. And we can come up and down like this, or out and in like that. And we can do, we can take a hit. Okay, so the idea was good, but it was too late. Now what do we do? Rigor on, kill the major. Kill the major, kill the major. I could also blowpipe this. This position is actually not too bad. So kind of unlucky, but he's dead. And you could also get blowpipe out. But the idea is there, if you think of the idea, you can get it ready earlier, you can take hits earlier, and it will prevent it from digging and causing a nuisance. So now that I've explained it, I'll start doing it faster, and you'll see it like in action, and it's really effective. 
Let's go kill these pets. Lovely. Yeah, always pipe nibblers. One barrage here, and let's just have a think. Okay, pray melee. Now, i got to see where the pillar is, because like if you take a step farther than this line here, you're going to die. But I can like stand here, get in range on both of this. Or I can blowpipe it. Okay, it's dead. Let's get ready to go around the pillar. Wait for the attack, and then move and pray. Same as always. Use more restore. Getting low. And now we do the same thing, where we want to control the melee. So every now and then, we take a hit. Wait for the attack, come back in. And do this every 4-5 attacks. Death animations is Entity Hider. So this process keeps the melee in check. No damage at all. And I can even, if I want to, safe spot this blob in a minute. Let's go here. And much like the other side, where I would be corner trapping NPCs here and here, you can do the same on this side. This is corner trap, and this is corner trap. It's not the same as if you were corner trapping this. This does not work, and this does not work when facing up and down. Okay, so I've got the blob. Now what do I want to do with him? Well, I could go around to the other side, but it's not much different killing it from here. This side is slightly worse, but you can do it. And it's the same principle when you kill it. You come and stand next to it. And the only difference is the melee can see you here. So you might take a bit more damage. That's about it. We are 82 HP. Let's uh, use Blood Barrage. And let's just stay still for a second. No need to do anything. Ah, this, okay. Don't get dragged out. Remember, we can't stay here or melee will hit us. Let's kill the bat and have a think. Okay, so the melee is going to dig and cause problems for me. Maybe let's just kill the melee. Simple solution. If I go around here and deal with the blob, then the blob might respawn. If I do anything else, it's going to just be a nuisance. So let's just take a course of action and kill the melee. Okay. If I want to save this, I can do. Um, I'll have to just take blob hits. I'm not going to flick magic. I'd rather just, like, go for it with a bofer and then run away. Let's go around the pillar. And now for this guy, I can heal off him with blob barrage. One barrage, not too bad, into our proper gear. And remember, we can't attack him or we'll be dragged around, so we take a step back and let him come to us. Now we can go for the ninja without any risk. Stuff might respawn. If the blob respawns, that's not great. Um, to be honest, what, what would have been better would be to wait for the ninja to pull in and then attack him from over here, because now the blob can respawn, which is not ideal. But if you have to kill everything in a wave, that's fine. Just do it methodically, and if it respawns, no problem. The cops are coming! Inferno's too easy. It's not allowed to be this easy. There's the blob. Let's just put on rigor and kill the major. It's nearly dead. We might take a hit, no problem. Okay, I'm round to the standard position. Let's use some more restore. Come all the way back. Let's take off a bit of our crystal. All we on, taking our time. One barrage. Two barrage. Should get to 99 quite happily. There we go. Put on our proper gear. And uh, mage pray to finish up the last guy. Rigor, because I feel like it. Lovely. So these waves are beginning to get tricky, but we're still using exactly the same What's stuff. Bananas. One attack, and uh, there's a lot of stuff here. Let's go around the pillar, and then begin praying. <laughs> Mr. Seabat, thank you for the raid. We're going to corner trap the melee temporarily. The bat's going to come around, which is good for us. Let's just attack this. And I think I, could, I might even be able to hit the middle from here. Let's give it a go. Let's pray melee and give it a go. Okay, cool. See you back, bro. I hope the infernos were good. Did you get record? Did you win? And again, we can, we can pipe this, we can blow pipe it, whatever it is. And three good runs? Gaming, man, gaming. Lovely. The reason why we kill the melee here is because if I attack the major from this side, I can't save swap the melee. If I attack it from this side, I could, but there's a blob there. Now we can focus on this guy. 
Died to wave 64 Ranger on spawn. Decent pace. Unlucky. It is what it is. What's going on outside? SWAT team. Uh, probably just a high crime rate area. Lots of biker gangs. Hence the motorcycles. I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, look. The melee is here. Let's click it. If you ever get a respawned melee and it's stuck, just kill it with Bofa. It's one of the best things about having a Bofa. Makes it so easy. Oh, a bat's respawned. Right click it, kill it. Oh, two bats have respawned. Okay. This is why preferably you stop killing stuff before the major, because it will be a bit of a nightmare. Um, and it wastes a lot of your prayer. Otherwise, not a big deal. In a case like this, we have a lot of press, so we can afford to do that kind of stuff and get away with it. <clears throat> yeah, man, you'll definitely, you can't use everything, you can't like tank stuff on your Pure Cape, but you can use 99% of this stuff for Pure Capes and it's chill. I mean, you could T-Bow it if you had a, a T-Bow, it's, it's not like the end of the world or anything. Okay. Call in sick for the watch this. I mean, there'll be a VOD mate, but yeah. There's still four videos on the YouTube that are basically the same as this, with slightly different solves and waves and stuff. So we're standing still, one barrage, fantastic. And we're still using this tile, it's just super good tile. One barrage, and we're gonna stand still. Click the ground, don't get pulled out. He can see us, the melee is stuck. I want to get to the nibbler, the blobs are stuck, let's kill the melee. And the key here was not moving. If I had moved and panicked and gone round the pillar, maybe I have to go to deal with blobs now. If I run east to get the nibbler, the melee's on me. If I just stand still and kill it, my west pillar is practically intact, it doesn't matter. He might dig though, and that's because I didn't take a hit from him. I killed him quick enough, uh, and usually you will do, but what I should have done was taken a hit to keep him in place. Otherwise I could have had a melee on me as well. I want to drag this guy closer. Let's go round the pillar but not attack the blob, and just get the major closer. Now let's go around and click him. So I don't have to, I don't, you, don't, you don't have to kill stuff when you go near it, you can just pro-click it. Yeah. Here. Yeah, you, I mean, the thing is, like, at the end of the day, this is a teaching stream. If you guys have any questions, just throw them down. And either myself or someone else in chat can help you out. Um... There shouldn't really be many questions other than like maybe gearing stuff because this is fairly simple. Um, it shouldn't be that complex. Ank legs, Aaron's top. Do you just take ank legs? Uh, nope, you only take ank top. Other way around. Uh, this is a bit of a weird blob one, uh, but we can still kill it in exactly the same way. There's two here, but it doesn't matter. Any questions? Any questions? Inferno questions. <laughs> and yeah, this guy's just corner, corner safe spot. We can let him round, we take a step around, let him in, and then we can attack him, and then go back in. Should you farm Augury or Eldritch? Why on earth would you want an Eldritch orb? It doesn't do anything. Other shield options? Crystal shield, DFS if you don't have a crystal shield. Ellie if you have one. One barrage, and let's just stand still, take a minute to think. Anything going on here? Not really. This guy's coming towards us. This guy's over here. Eh. Okay. So let's kill it. Let's just kill it. We can't really get to the major. It's kind of stuck. We know what we want to do, but we got to kill something. So let's just do this. Bring the gods suffering? Yes. Why is it some people get cape in five tries, others takes months? That is down to a difference in the way they are both trying to learn and sort of the approach they take. A lot of people don't seem to have the understanding that this is something you have to learn and you have to put time in to learn. You can't just run in with good gear and get a KC. You have to have an idea of um, how the mechanics work, you have to take time to learn basic things like wanted alternating, you have to have a look at things like uh, how melees work. So for example if I'm standing here on these three tiles, I'm preparing a melee dig. The average first caper doesn't do this, and yet it's really easy to do. Um, it's partially because no good guides have this idea, so I just come over and stand here and like I have a dig spot, right? 
Now, I've got another problem in the form of that guy's gonna dig now, so I need to kill something. And now he's gonna dig, what do I do? Okay, let's come back over here and pray melee, right? So you have, you have to have these ideas in your head before you go for this. Otherwise, the melees are gonna fuck you up on this wave. So a lot of, uh, obviously a lot of first capers are just lucky. Um, but when it comes to it, most important factor is actually trying to learn, as opposed to trying to cheese it. If you're running in with Justy and Eldritch and your attempts are taking six hours, and you're taking minimal damage until the one wave that kills you, you're not learning anything. And if you're not learning anything, you're not going to get a cape. Alright, wave 50 onwards, we start from this tile and we put on our tank top. One barrage. And now, you see how the Major attacked me? If my South Pillar was dead, that would not have happened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the South Pillar die. Now let's put on our proper gear, wait for the ranger attack, go around the pillar and kill this guy. This is why we want the south pillar to be dead. Because otherwise, if, if the south pillar's alive, I can't stand here anymore. So we're going to let this pillar die. Um, you can do it naturally, you can just let it happen. Or you can try and let it fall pre-50. But it's actually just a really shit thing to have the south pillar up at this point. You want it to fall. Would this be much harder with the same gear that replaced Kodo with Ancient Scepter? Zero difference. You would not notice the difference. Um, it really doesn't matter. You can downgrade this gear massively and you can do exactly the same things and have the same outcome. The green tile is party plugin, it's what I'm using to showcase tiles. So I'm 49 HP and I have Barrage. Let's take off our gear, make sure we have this autocast on, and just go for this guy. I'm actually going to let South Pillar fall, it's really bad. The pillar needs to die because when a major spawns up here, it paths into the pillar and then comes down, and then it can see me on this tile here. If this pillar's not here, the major paths behind the pillar and gets stuck. So it's it doesn't seem like it, but if you're using this start tile, and it is a very good one, that is a big detriment to you, you're just existing. So letting it die if you're a first caper, it might seem a bit crazy, but it's actually very good. Okay. So we've got 83 HP off that, not bad. If we want to brew more, that's fine. But for now, this is okay. Tank gear on, and put Sea Shield on as well. One barrage, and let's pray range. The Major's... Oh, careful here. Yikes, okay. So what I didn't do there was click the ground. Okay. Too much talking. Uh, what I didn't do there was click the ground, and therefore I got dragged out. Um, that was a bit scary. In times like that, just pray mage. Brew. Uh, let's come back here. Three off it? Yeah, I got lucky. That would have been a bit sad if it died like that. So Brews are there to survive. Just doing some first caper stuff. Yeah, so after first barrage, this is why nibbler chasing is also like extremely bad. Click the ground over here. Just click the ground so you stay still. If you have your south pillar alive, you often get dragged out like this. And if you go for this pillar and you don't click off, you're going to get dragged from here out like that, which is what happened there. Pretty lucky to not die there, but yeah. Kills a lot of people. Um, yeah, if it would have just killed, it would have just killed. Nothing I can do. Would have to gone again. 33 HP, so we will have to get back here and uh, heal up. Standing far back is nice for the final hit as well. Should get to like 70, 80 something. This is fine though. Anyway, I was saying something, wasn't I? I can't remember now. Why is it way 50 versus any earlier? Because you get a Major and a Ranger. If it's only a Major, it doesn't matter. But because there's a Ranger, if I stand here, sometimes I want to pray Mage. Uh, sometimes I want to pray Range when standing here. And I can't really do that. Okay, I'm quite low. Let's put Augury on and Blood Barrage. Now let's pray Range. I click the ground there so I don't get dragged out. Now I want to wait to get to the Major, but it's a bit tricky. Let's get ready to come out on this side. Uh, I'm going to have to kill the bats, so Rig on, maybe a Blowpipe spec. Oh, I can take a step back here and just attack him. And now I've got to do the same thing, but praying magic, wait for the Ranger, and then attack. Yeah. Clicking ground, very important. This bat is just stuck inside the Major, so I don't have to worry about him. And again, West Pillar doesn't matter. If anything, you want the Pillar to die, because otherwise you're going to get dragged out. So same thing as what happened on that last wave. He's super stuck. You find Fasani impossible? How much harder is this to Fasani? Uh, Fasani is quite easy compared to Inferno. 
But if you haven't watched the guide or anything like that, well, everything is going to be difficult. Let's blow pipe walk around and get the bofer out, hit this guy. We are 84 HP, and on waves 50 plus we want to be 99 when starting, so let's get our healing gear out. But there could be a few factors as to why you're finding it hard. Uh, the biggest one is because you're playing full screen. Am I right? Are you full screen? If you're full screen, everything is difficult. Paused greatly for the answer. Let's use more restore. One barrage. And uh, let's actually just come around, so we only have to deal with the blob. Now we've got to flick the blob. And what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to alternate this. We're going to alternate to fix this. Unlucky. When this dies, the ranger's gonna come around because the mage's blocking it. So I gotta make sure to step back up, otherwise, the ranger's gonna hit me. We're gonna prioritize that over flicking the blob. There's the blob attack. And I can actually do the same with the ranger and just alternate it. Blobs are useful for healing pre 50. Rangers are useful for healing post-50. So ideally I kill the blob and then I go to the ranger to heal off it. But in this case it doesn't really matter. Why is full screen harder? Because when you're PVMing you need to click your inventory, you need to click your prayers, and you need to click roughly the middle of your screen. As you increase your screen size, doing that becomes exponentially harder because you're not just increasing like one way distance you're increasing the distance that you have to visibly watch your like inventory and then look at the middle of the screen and then look back so you have to your eyes have to make the trip and then your hands have to make the trip you're really really compounding issues by doing that that's all it really is mr tedious hello sir thank you for the 245 raid welcome my friends if you do not have a cape I can promise that I will help you if you stick around. One decent barrage. We can finish this with blowpipe. I'm gonna pray magic for this guy, of course. Lovely. Also now an infernal gamer. This is huge, my friend. Congratulations. One barrage, and let's flick this blob. Everything is behind the pillar. Now, this is a tricky wave. This is a tricky, tricky wave. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare this stack while flicking the blob. Now, this is tricky. So we have to flick the blob, and we can turn our camera, and we know that when it hits us we flick our prayer, so that's easy enough. Now you've got to get the timing right. This is a standard pillar stack with a bat in front. Normally you come out here by clicking the back NPC. But in this case, we've got to come out here because the bat's in front. You can find solves like this um, by looking at various Inferno guides, but the short end of it is got to run from here to here and click the major and then alternate. Sounds a bit tricky, we're going to put on rigor, and then we should be fine. You look like you would make a mean pizza with those. And now we alternate with Rigoron. GMGM. Jasper, thank you for the five months. GM, sir. Just like that. And then you just commit to it. Mr. Bebop, very nice. Keep doing those tasks, man. Keep alternating. Okay, might take a hit from the blob, that's fine. Let's go around. Click the blob again. <laughs> okay, on the ranger. Actually, no, let's kill the blob first. We want to heal off the ranger. So something like that seems pretty complex, but when you break it down, all I'm doing is keeping the blob alive, and when I'm alternating, it does not exist. So I'm flicking the blob until I go for the pillar stack, and then I'm just committing to the pillar stack, making sure I do it correctly. It is tricky, most of the time you come from here to here, but with a bat you come here, and a blob you come here as well. Now we can attack this ranger, and uh, let's heal off it as well. We're 72, so we might not get 99, but if we stand all the way back, and we auto, I mean manual cast like this, we'll get in one more barrage, which is nice. Let's take off some negatives.
those kind of souls you will have to look for first cake guides um exact as good ones i think no monkey might have one now let's do another manual cast here get 95 let's see if we can get 99 with a manual 97 not bad tank gear on if you have excess prayer, you can put on augury at the start of these 50 plus waves. And now you see the major does not attack me, whereas previously it did. And that is because the south pillar's dead. Let's move in and attack this bat. This blob is going to come around the pillar. If I take a step in, everything shuffles and now he gets drawn down. I, I couldn't really showcase this earlier, but that's how it works. Now, I can't attack the major from this side because the ranger's here. What I can do is come around this way, and uh, I might take like a range hit and a blob, which is fine. If you ever do this kind of thing, you can test it in case of dying or like being afraid of what's there. You can always just be like, oh, let's have a look. Let's see what's happening. Okay, now you know what's on that side. That's fine. There's a few tactics you can use here. The first one will be stepping out and killing the blob while alternating the ranger. That's fine. That makes things simpler. Another really cool way we can do this is by stepping out here, getting the ranger on tick, and then coming across. That looks something like this. Gotta kill the bat, of course. This does require you to also flick them. But you have an alternative in just killing the blob. But if you can do this, great. Assembler or range cape? Assembler. Range cape isn't bad. Range cape isn't bad at all. But you shouldn't require a range cape. If you have Devout, an ROTG, you have infinite prayer. Now let's step behind the pillar and see what we're working with. Sit more restore. Bat can't get to us, let's attack the blob and alternate. Yeah, I think you can drag the range around in some circumstances, but it's not something that's very obvious to do. So it's probably not the kind of thing I would like to teach for escapers. It's just a bit tricky is what it comes down to. Yeah, this guy is going to be a nuisance. Let's attack him. It does not matter if we take damage right now. I just want to kill these guys ASAP and then they can heal off the ranger. Because the ranger should be full HP. Great. A lot of these 50 plus waves you are going to have to heal. Just trying to drag him closer. Great. Once we get to 99. Once we get to 99. There we go. We can attack. With Blowpipe to finish it off. How much HP a ranger? I'd say about 40. He will take about 40. A blob is also about 40. But the blob is less, like, guaranteed. Alright, Mage Prey. One barrage. And let's alternate this blob. Or, uh, you know, flick the blob. We don't have to kill the blob, and again, if we do, it's, it might complicate things. Let's take a step in, and this allows the major to come and sit itself right up on the pillar. And this we can just attack, the blob won't see us as long as you're here. So a lot of waves, sometimes you just gotta wait. If there's nothing immediately threatening to you, sometimes just let it settle on the pillar, and then figure it out. In this case, you can see that nothing is like on this line, and nothing's gonna get to you. The blob is actually stuck from moving, so this is why hull outlines are really good. And some waves are just free. Very, very free. When it dies, let's come back around. Because these guys are going to drag. And let's deal with this guy first. We're going to step in. We did it a bit late, which means this guy is free. If I take a step back there, he can't get to me. And I should really be praying magic. Okay. Alright, let's go for this stack. Doesn't really matter what I kill first here. I'm gonna kill the close thing first. Let's come back, let this guy drag in. More restore. Notice we've used one, two, three, four, five restores so far. And we're like maybe three quarters of the way through the inferno. So for us to have this many left uh, with like practically no flicking is ridiculous, quite frankly. Thank you, Ring of the Gods. One barrage, and let's stand still. Okay, this is tricky. In this case, the melee is going to be off-ticked. 
And the way I know this is because this start tile just generates off ticks. Put simply, if you stand still here and you don't panic and you don't move, this will be off ticked. That is just how it is. Um, and that's one of the major benefits of starting there. We can come around the pillar, kill this guy off, and then go back around. Now, you know that by default, if you stand here, you will off-tick melees. As long as they spawn here and here. That's just one of the benefits of the tile. So don't be afraid to try and flick that, because you will, by default, know it's fine. Uh, alternatively, Rigoron, Bofa, Blowpipe, Double Blowpipe, Spec it, and Brew Up, Kill it, if you're not sure. You cannot predict spawns, no. There, it's completely random. There is no predicting. Yeah. This is an auto off tick. Anywhere on this line is not off ticked. If you stand anywhere in the middle of a pillar, you will not off tick the melee. If you stand here, anywhere here, this is also an off tick. So it's really nice to remember it. Basically, either side of the pillar, and it will be off ticked. Melee's come on me. Let's go over here. If he digs like that, move away, kill it, stand still, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Yeah, you you can record on a log and it, you know. I don't think I don't think that's like the best way to go about learning Inferno, but yeah. Does that off trick work when melee spawns north? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever the whenever the melee's over here, it will work. Thank you, Ron. This is also off ticked, as you can see. Let's kill the melee. And I'm going to kill it for a particular reason. I want to showcase something. Okay. Now we can attack the niblet. Get rid of it. When a major is here, what I cannot do is attack it, because this will happen. So you can off-tick it like that, but it's not good. What you want to do is stand here. If I go there for one tick, he'll move in one time. If I go there for two ticks, he'll move in a second time. This means I can attack him from this tile, or the middle tile. I cannot attack him from here, I'll get pulled in. Whenever you have a major that spawns in this position, you have to stand here. That's all it comes down to. Alright, a melee has spawned back again. I need to find a way to kill this melee, or to trap it. I have a few options available. Uh, DPSing the major isn't a bad one. What I'm going to do is, in a few seconds, I'm going to step out here and try and off-tick the ranger major. And now, when it digs, I can move back diagonally. Just like that. And again, we can attack from anywhere here. So this is safe. Now that process... Yes, it's a bit hard for first capers, but it's certainly doable. If you're not comfortable, what you can do is you can put on Augury or Rigor for the defense, and put on Crystal Shield, and then do that process and flick it until it digs. So there are plenty of ways to maximize the like success rate of it, even if you're not sure you're on tick with the Ranger, and you will tank it, you are going to survive it. So you have some options. But very important to uh, be aware of melees and find a place for them to dig to. That one's a tricky one. That kind of forces you to off tick. Um, usually, the best solution is put on rigor and kill the major. Usually. Let's corner trap the ranger. We've been using corner traps elsewhere, so doing this shouldn't be too difficult. And now, what I want to do is I want to get to these guys. When he attacks, Let's pray range and come round, and then back to magic. Let's kill these nibblers and this bat. Get rid of it, get rid of it. Kill, kill, kill. The melee is going to dig at some point. What I'm going to do is start attacking the major from three tiles away. You can't be here, but you can be here. And, okay, well he's dug on me. So now what? Maybe let's go for a DPS option. Let's see if it's off tickable. Rigor on, double blowpipe spec. And let's brew twice. Get ready to brew some more. We're fine. Bit tricky. 
And again, it pays. If I was a bit earlier with this, I could simply go and take an attack, and then the melee would stay in place. So you've got to think about these things ahead of time. This is kind of like how it might be on your first few attempts. You might like not quite get it, but if you have the idea in mind, then after two or three more attempts, it'll be okay. Ah, the melee is back. When a respawned melee is hit, kill it. Get rid of it. Nightmare. Uh, this, today's sub-65 is with Bofa. So it's going to be like a semi-fast Bofa task. I'll probably bring Shins because it will make life easier though, so... 54 HP, it's time to heal up. Don't go and attack the Ranger randomly. Let's uh, make sure we have this on Autocast. And we can take a long step back as well. So we can generate that last heal. I have a task right now, actually. This is technically on task. So it's kind of sad that I'm using one like this, but what are you going to do? So a bit slow, but we're getting there. Gonna start manual casting. Pretty bad heals right now. If I take off Crystal Helmet, it'd be a bit better. Manual cast, manual cast, manual cast, and let's go back. We got a pretty good heal out of that. Augury on for these waves, and let's Blood Barrage. A bit more HP. Let's pray range and click the ground. Important, otherwise we get dragged out. There's a melee here, uh, but let's go attack the Major. Okay, I'm gonna set up another melee trap by being up here. Let's alternate. This might not work, actually. Let's stand here instead. Oop. Let's stand here. That's the one time it doesn't work. So I've got a space here where I can stand, and it's going to put it basically on the pillar. Let's just pray magic exclusively. And now it's stuck. Just alternate and kill it off. Bit of a tricky wave. And all I'm doing is I'm predetermining a place for the melee to go. In that case, shoving it right on the pillar over here means it's going to get stuck. Our other pillar has only just fallen. It's quite a late wave at this point. Let's take out the negatives, augury on, one barrage, two barrage. From 90 should go to 99 quite happily. There we go. Good, good, good. Tank your arm. One barrage, and let's just have a think. Okay, I want to kill the major. Tank your arm. I'm going to go here to drag him in. Rig your arm, and let's alternate. Just tanking the blood is fine. Now I want to deal with the melee. How do I deal with the melee? Let's just think for a minute. Let's take a step out so we can take a step back. Now let's begin alternating again. Shouldn't take any more damage if we do, it's no problem. Take a step back. Ooh, brew here. I'm gonna brew twice because I took a hit from the ranger. Restore. And alternate. Wait for the attack. And now we're back on normal. Scary wave. Uh, I lingered too long here instead of moving back early, and the ranger hit me. So, not the cleanest thing, but. The main thing is we had a plan to deal with the melee, enacted the plan, and all is well. Wait for this attack. Pray, then go around. And whenever I was thinking about what to do with the melee, instead of just like non-stop alternating, I would just stop doing anything, pray magic, have a think, and formulate a plan. So instead of rushing it, you can sort of take a little bit of damage and afford to do that, use maybe one or two doses, 
continue with the wave. Now this is a late wave. This is a very late wave. Um, this is 61, I think. For this guy, 67 HP. So we're going to come all the way back again. One barrage, two barrage. But if you're using supplies and resources to get through these waves, that's completely normal. Very magic here at the end. Get one more barrage out. 99, lovely. Let's go back. Especially in these waves, you can pre-brew as well. One barrage, corner trap the major. This tile is amazing. Now we can pray range. Not rushing the not rushing the prey switch or anything. Now, there's a melee coming. What am I going to do with the melee? How am I going to deal with it? The answer is, this is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. Um, what I can do is stay completely still and wait for the melee to dig, then kill it. I'm going to have to off-tick some stuff here. It's going to get a bit tricky. Or maybe I can run over here, but I have to get the mage flick as I do it. Okay, wait for the ranger. Mage flick. And now back on range. Rigor on. Alternate for the blob. Kill the melee. So I wasn't attacking, I was just having a think. Came up with one solution, wasn't very good. Had a look at another solution, seemed a lot safer. Keep alternating. Okay, now I'm going to have to go around to this guy. Rigor on. Wait for the attack and then go. Doesn't matter how you alternate this, how you do it. Rigor on is a nice safety net. But the melee trap, the way to deal with the melee, using what we know already. And sometimes just takes a second to think. More restore. There's a bat there, so I don't really want to step in. Kill this guy. Oh, and through the magic of barrage power, I can hit both of these. Wow. Oh, okay, we're playing range, it's fine. I'm trying to go back to our nice safety time. Solutions like that are very difficult. Um, to be totally honest, the first solution I came up with, which was standing here, letting the melee dig on me, and then putting rigor on, putting gear on, getting ready to brew and just attack it, completely fine. And the chances are, three quarters of the time, it's going to be off-ticked from the ranger. So I can stand here, the major's trapped, and I just off-tick it if I can do. If not, just focus on killing it. Um, it's not the best solution, but it's a solution. The way I did it was to like watch the ranger attack, go around praying mage, and now it's trapped, kill it, come back and do these two guys together. That much is tricky, yes, but very doable. The planning part is the hard part. But it's also the bit that will practically guarantee capes. Okay, one barrage, corner trap! Yoo -hoo! Now, I don't like melees at this stage of the game. Our pillar is nice and healthy. Let's take a step back and start attacking. In fact, I can use blowpipe and maybe one blowpipe spec to try and speed it up. Rigoron is good here. And my pillar, because we've been so careful with it throughout the waves, is quite high. Now I come back to the nibbler tile. And use bofa and barrage to clean these guys up. And even now my pillar is half HP, which is enough for two infernos. Okay, I want to deal with the major, which means I'm going to have to alternate these guys. Wait for the attack. Now, come round, alternate. Hard part is thinking on your feet. Yeah, you, it, it's about like, um, the hard part is not thinking. It's about creating the time to think. For example, if you're wanting alternating like this as a learner, you are not going to come up with good solutions. Which is why a lot of the time I say, stop alternating. Just have a think. Like right now, if I just take a second, like, okay, what the hell is going on? Is there a melee about to dig on me? Stop alternating. Okay, where do I go? Set up the safe spot. Okay, I'm going to stand here, and then I'm going to move in. And then you move in, and then a melee is safe spotted, and you're fine. And I've taken, like, you know, practically no damage, because the entire time I'm pouring rigor. Let's come around the pillar and isolate. You know, you, you, you can tank blob hits. You can sort stuff out like that. And the more you practice it, the more likely you are to find a solution quickly, and still alternate correctly. 
So that's kind of the thing. You don't have to rush it. You don't have to overwhelm yourself. You can just sort of keep it really simple. And sometimes it pays off. Ow. Okay, took a bit of damage. Gonna use these guys to heal. This is the dreaded wave 63 that is a lot easier than people seem to make it. Ooh, that's fine. Pray melee hit. Let's use another blowpipe spec, get a bit more HP. Probably not the best time to use it, but I don't care too much right now. The next waves should be quite easy. Sometimes they're actually horrifically hard, but uh, this should be okay. 97 is good enough for me. Um, you can also do this on other waves. If you get to late waves like this and you have lots of brew left, you can pre-brew. You can pre-restore. And uh, you can use one or two Bastions at like wave 58 onwards. So I can use a dose of Bastion right now, use Augury on for the start. And then even like scary waves like this, you can still do the corner trap, you can still like practice it. And now we're fine. Both are on. Right click this guy, kill him. Cool. Practice turns it to reflexes, yeah. And all, and all this idea of like thinking about where to go to corner trap stuff, uh, it ends up like not really mattering. Okay. Take a step out, pray mage just in case. When this guy digs, I come back here. And even now, I'm thinking about how do I corner trap him when he digs. I don't just stand there randomly, it's about thinking where do you go. How many waves? 69 waves. And actually, believe it or not, this is the first time in this entire run I've had a standard pillar stack. Uh, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> I did a boaty click, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, okay. This is actually a good time to explain. Whenever you have like NPCs like this and they're stacked, if you wiggle, they'll sometimes fall into place. Uh, and you'll see that sometimes it'll gatekeep it. So like right now, this major can't get to me, but I should probably just kill the ranger. Sometimes happens. And now, in I can't believe it, this entire run I've had zero pillar stacks thanks to that. What's a body click? A body click is when your, your hand hits your mouse as you're about to show something. So like, I was going to showcase the normal stack and I accidentally clicked here because I like touched my mouse like that instead of like doing it properly. And so I can't even show you the standard pillar stack, but it's in every guide ever, so whatever. Tactical nearly respawn, yep, yep. Just first get tactics. And then you die on your hardcore, yeah. That's the second part. Behind the pillar, free range. Let them come in. Go! Symphones, mate. Do you know what taking a hint means? Or you know when like other people in chat are like, hmm, is that the kind of thing you just ask out of the blue randomly? The answer is yes, mate. But at the same time, not kind of not the kind of thing you should probably go out like, ah, oh, is he, is he not? Okay, there's a major here, wait for the attack. Go and attack. Murder these others. Murder, murder, murder. Die! Wait for the attack, go back round. Great. You can also just attack him from the nether safe spot. Uh, here. I have seven and a half resource left. I'm gonna use Rigor for the entirety of this run from now on. My prayers are not gonna go off. Um, this is again, with like, I'm practically not flicking. So to be able to camp Rigor, I could probably have camped Rigor from like wave 50 plus, like not 50 plus, but like maybe 58 plus. Basically the hard waves. And I would still have infinite prayer. Once again, Ring of the Gods plus Devout equals infinity AFK. Much, much better than other stuff. I can take the time to reposition some of my supplies, get them close to the top left of my inventory where I want to use them. And now we're on to double major, so I'm just going to AFK. Recommended defense level, 80. Let's use this pillar to drag them both together. Makes it nice and easy to uh, attack them in range. And I'm going to use a restore whenever my prayer hits about 60 now. Going to top myself up all the time, nice and easy. Remember, don't stand next to the pillar when it goes down, you will take half your HP and damage. Yeah, 80 prayer is fine, to be totally honest. You don't really need a whole lot. <laughs> if, 
you don't have devout in ROTG, you got to flick more. Correct. To be fair, not a not a not a lot more, but a bit more, yeah. If you have Ring of Suffering and Devout Boots, you will probably have about four restores left right now, which is still enough to AFK. But you know, you might want to like flick a rigor like this. You might want to do this kind of thing instead of just like permanently having a rigor room. Now, of course, more supplies is always better, but you certainly don't require it. I should have probably killed this guy first, it's gonna respawn now, but whatever. Yeah, fucking knew it. Luckily the hard work is done. The waves are the only bits that matter, so... The rest of this should be pretty chill, unless I mess up greatly. Yo, Mr. Luke! This really helps. Yo, Mr. Luke! Thank you for the 13. Much appreciated. And um, yeah, if you want more of this stuff, it's on the YouTube. And today's run plus the one after will also be up there. It's like the only thing I've uploaded for like months now is just first game stuff, but I'm glad it's useful. All right, for the Jads, prayer book open. And what we want to do is we want to stand here. We want to stand one tile away from its northwest. So like get to its area and all the Jads we start here, all of them. If you're not comfy at Jads, start by brewing, restoring, and getting some Bastion. And just make sure you're comfy. I have no tricks to tell you at Jad, um, other than to stand here and walk back for healers. Because there really isn't a lot to it. When you think healers are going to come, get ready. Prayer book open. Always don't, don't linger on your inventory, linger on your prayer book. We can spend one barrage over here, maybe another barrage over here. Keep praying. And whenever you get to this position, you can walk back to try and trap. It doesn't always work. Um, this guy is the one that's like meant to be trapping. Sometimes you'll get lucky, sometimes you won't as a first caper. But if in doubt, move north. If there's two healers on you, move north. And that's all you gotta know. Most people should be pretty comfy for single jab. It's just single jab. And this camera angle, looking around the back of jab, is what we want. And this is gonna be the same for all of them. At all times during Jad, you're going to have Rigor on. Let's use a dose of Brew. We're going to stand roughly in the center of the room. A dose of Restore. And let's go to the correct tile, which is here. Dose of Bastion. And this camera angle is going to allow us to see behind Jad. We can see behind him, nice and easy. And that's all we really need. Rigor on permanently, you need the defense. It's good for healers, it's good for Jad. Damage is very important to speed things up. And now, because there's only three healers per each of these guys, we can just use both of the target. Number one. You look like you would make do the ones at the back first. Arms. And do the one close to you last. There we go. And we have the prayer book open the entire time. You shouldn't have to go into your inventory. Mr. Anton, hope you're doing well. Thank you for the 11, my friend. And so the camera angle should stay, like, permanently set. You might take a bit of damage from healers. If you need to, you can brew. On the last jet, we're going to heal back up anyway. And all you got to do every now and then after a jet attacks is sip some restore, then go back into your prayer menu, and then hover your prayers. That's it. Ignore the damage the healers are giving to you. It does not matter. If you're not comfortable and you have a lot of brew, you can, of course, brew. Now let's go to the next place and stand here. Same again. Now this is a bit scary, the HP is getting somewhat low. So what I can do, I've got three brews, let's use another two doses. And get like a bit higher. And if I ever take a hit, I've got a chance to survive now. Another dose of Bastion. Prayer book open as much as possible. Yo Mike, how are we doing? You Prophet Anton all here in the Airbnb about a hit of RLCS? Yo, very nice, man. I need some picks, please, yo. Yeah. Where is RLCS this year? Alright, first set of healers. One's at the back first. One at the front last. It's in Boston? Oh. Don't think it's been held there before. Alright, I got two healers on me. I'm going to take a step back, and I'm going to get one healer on me. 
That's all it is. One step north. If there's more healers on you, keep taking steps north. Marshall's old neck of the woods? Yeah, yeah. Boston indeed. Boston and Texas. Next chat, let's move across. Same place again. This was bringing five brews in, so I've used about two and a half for the waves. And I only really need about one to two for Zuck. Um, depending on what method you want to do to tank sets and stuff, you might end up using a bit more, but depends. Considering how many restores I have, I would rather have like one less restore and one more brew, to be totally honest. Because um, again, there's like infinite prayer. Get these hits off. And now after Jad attacks, I can pray melee, and I can walk up to it. You guys have seen this from like fight cave stuff. You just run back and forwards. Make sure you get the mage prayer or whatever prayer it is, and run through Jad. This is pretty common first cave stuff. Make sure you pray. You have to pray. And then if you want to get the last bit of healing required, set it all up. Make sure you have it on autocast and barrage away to your heart's content. That is 99. Here on, let's go to Zuck. Using Rigor, preferably. There we go. Rigor on when starting, and we're going to right click Zuck to begin. Depends which way the shield goes, you might have to do some different things with Bofa. If you can off tick the sets, please do. All you need to do to off-tick sets, the only thing you have to do is blowpipe them in succession. So we're going to get a couple of attacks, move to the safe spot. And whenever Zuck attacks, we can move to the next one. There's the attack. We can go. And this is safe. I can't go here, but this is fine. There's the attack. I can start moving. Just keep attacking, keep attacking. Next safe spot. Don't go too much further. Run! And throughout this, we can use our stamina as much as we like. So we're going to sip it all the time. If you have to use a couple of doses and waves, that's fine too, if you're low agility. Another attack, next safe spot. You don't have to be right on it, you can be close to it. This is fine. You just have to be like not further than it. Blow pipe on, range spray, spec number one, spec number two, and just attack. Wait for the shield to start moving, then follow it. And this is the blow pipe walking you have to do. You've got to get good at doing this, very important skill. Attack the major, pray mage, move to safe spot. Attack and move. And the goal now is to get Zuck below 600. There's the attack, so I can move. There's the attack. More restore. What if you start trying to kill Ranger and don't manage? How do you off take mage range? Yeah, if if you if you uh if you commit to just trying to kill the ranger then don't manage to kill it. Unlucky. So we're not fully potted to uh, 112 with range, so it's going to be a bit slower. And at this rate, we probably are going to get a second set, but it doesn't really matter. Depends how fast Chad dies and Healers dies. A couple more good hits like that will be okay. We're at 107 range, let's use another dose of Bastion. We got a whole one left. Explained it for the learners. I don't know, just kill it. If in doubt, just kill it. Use the bow for a click it. Tank with shield. You have tank shield, use tank shield. So this is quite a slow one even for Bofa. We're very likely to get two sets. Um, if you want to use a set timer, good, if you have one available. Now we're below 600, we can kill the Major. I still recommend killing healers, but after healers you will probably have a set. Yeah, you just want to keep attacking. Always keep attacking. Okay. 
Now, I can't attack him from here, but I can attack Zuck. I can do like a couple of hits, not too many. Five eighty is shared, or five seven nine. Now we can go back on Zuck. Once Jad spawns, we're at a race against the clock to try and kill healers as well. Let's use a dose of stamina. There's Chad. Time to start attacking. And we're gonna flip our camera. You can attack from both sides, just fine. There's the attack, we can move. Wait for the attack. There it is. Keep moving. Right click and attack. One suck attacks, you can barrage this to attack them all. Gotta be careful, otherwise you will be dragged. You look like you would make a mean pizza with those arms. And again, the trick to Jad is keep the prayer book open. Try not to go to your inventory too much. There's the attack, I can move. How that's a few. Okay, now we're gonna get to healers. Mr. Sala for the big 21. That's a few, that is a few. Thank you very much. And we want to be full HP, so let's brew. Restore. I could even put Preserve on. And uh, Bastion. Healers is 239, 240. And even now, despite that being really slow, I can still push to get to healers. And see if I can get them on the side. There's 315. Gotta be a bit careful now. Don't want to get behind the shield. If I hit some really big numbers here, I can proc it. So 273, I could get it if I hit big. One more. Blow pipe on. I don't know why I'm praying mage. And we're going to bow for these two to tag them. I may get a set spawning, in which case I'll tag one of the NPCs and try and kill it. And I can leave the other one on the shield. We're blow pipe walking, doing a lot of right clicking. We're not going to go for this guy, we're going to follow the shield. Rigor on the entire time. Follow, 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 follow. Walking where we can do. Blowpipe specs are up. Still right clicking. Oh, don't want to get behind the shield. We can duck into the side and then back out. Keep brewing. Staying really high HP. Just following that shield. And now we can brew to full. There's 108, that will do. And now we're at a DPS race against Zuck. If Zuck is maybe 100 HP, Bastion as well. If Zuck is maybe 100 HP, we can consider using just like Tag Mage and then go from there. But notice how I'm like, I'm walking with the shield a lot more now. I'm being a lot more careful to stay right next to it instead of running ahead. Another dose of Restore or another dose of uh, Stamina. Shield starts to move. I have to be a bit more careful. You'll lose a couple of ticks there, but that's okay. You can be ahead of the shield, you can't be behind the shield. You can do like attack move, attack move like this. And anywhere in the corner is fine, including this tile. Okay, let's tag the major. And let's go back on Zuck. I have a lot of brew and I'm full HP. So what I'm going to do is keep attacking this shield until I get to the other side and see what kind of my hits are on Zuck. Really bad. Okay, let's tag the ranger. Now I'm going to hit it with Bofa and then switch into Blowpipe here. And now I've got a Blowpipe walk with the shield. We are potted. And we've got to be with the shield, with the shield, with the shield. If we get to this far and it's not dead, firstly, you're unlucky. Secondly, use your brew, put on the shield, and just sit here. Just tank it. Come back around, and when you get through about, realistically, this safe spot, you can hit the ranger with your bofa. But in short, I don't know, I've done like four or five of these now. That's the first time I've had a second set in a bad position. Um, as for set with healers, it's not going to happen. You'd have to noodle incredibly hard. Now, people lose ticks, which is a bit different. 
So you've got to be a little bit careful. And if you're doing first cape, I would recommend getting a friend to help with the set timer. You can find plugins all over the place to help with set timer. Um, and it does help. But it's definitely not, like, necessary. Yeah. Zuck is Zuck. Um, you can find a thousand videos of Zuck and whatnot, so nowadays it's not that difficult. And again, despite the long Zuck and camping rigor from, like, Jads onwards, we have three restores remaining, completely free. Um, if you drop to Ring of the Go Ring of Suffering, you would still have at least maybe one on a dose. Zero flicking. Yeah, you gotta be careful not to die like that. Good show the off-tick. I'll do some more runs with the off-tick. The run I do now will include the off-tick, so yeah. I wasted a task, I'm about to waste another task, dude. Alright. Uh, this one is... Both are sub-65. I'll put on my cosplay helm. Actually, I'll put on my lovely, lovely slayer helm. This is both are sub-50, so this assumes you will also have crystal shield again. Now, task helm is still better than using crystal helm. Um, we're still going to use sea shield, anguish stuff, zarite vams. Uh, One Piece Ancestral is fine for this. Still want a Code Iron Occult. Oh, I'm gonna need Blowy, that, Crystal Armor, I don't know where, oh, I've got Crystal Armor. Yeah, never say never. It's not that hard. One Stamina. And let's take... Two Divine, oh, maybe one Divine and two Regulars. And again, we're going to take maybe, say, five restores, or f five brews, give or take. Remember, this is meant to be a budget speedrun if, if you want to get the times and stuff, but you do not have um, Tebow, you can still do it. And again, we're still going to be using Ring of the Gods, and we're still going to be using Devout Boots. Remains very broken. Um, I need Cape, Assembler, Assembler. I can never find my assembler these days. Yeah. So the gear is basically the same. Um, the only difference is we're going for sub-65, which means we're going to be doing everything we were doing, but a bit faster. I think I can do this without chins just fine, so I'm not going to use chins either. Same kind of downgrades, Ancient Scepter, Aram's Top, Ring of Suffering, Range Cape, Barrow's Gloves. Same kind of stuff. Dragon darts? No, you don't need dragon darts. Of course, if you have them, great, but it's not going to stop you from getting this. So, same pre part. And now, in this run, if you're watching first cape stuff, you'll notice that I'm basically doing exactly the same things that, as I was doing previously. In fact, I ended with three restores. So on this run, let me drop this for a sixth brew. And now on a lot of ways, the only difference between what I was doing in the first cape run and this is that everything will be a bit more fluid. I'll be doing it a bit more naturally instead of sort of, well, not doing it, I guess. And um, there'll be less sort of talk about explaining and more actually doing of the task. This is on task. But again, very similar gear, similar setup, same strategies, same everything. Um... You will have to play a bit faster, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to monitor my pace, so that I'm definitely on time. For speedy ones, you should have a couple of KC at this point, be comfortable with all the basic optics and things, and be comfortable starting fairly close to the center of the room. One barrage, switch your gear, click the nearest NPC, and begin one ticking. And that is 99% of the speed run. Put the sea shield to the side, we can still start back on pillar a little bit. But for the early waves, you want to be quite aggressive. And the other tip is always attack with Rigoron. Attack one thing. If you're not sure if it's dead, click the next thing anyway. Turns out it is dead. Great. Click the next thing. Great. So always try and attack something. That is your biggest time save. Not a very good barrage. Let's do one more. And now let's switch our gear. And we're always cleaning up with Blowpipe. Hello, Sam. For blobs, instead of letting them come up on pillar, we're going to go attack it. Switch to our gear. Try and keep a rigor on. 
And for gloves, we stand like directly north of it. One barrage and switch into our proper gear. And notice we take a bit of damage, but our healing source in this speedrun is blood barraging mini blobs. That's basically all we do. Somewhere back on pillar, one barrage, flick the blob, go and attack the bat, try and get the blob flicks, and just run up and hit it. You can bow for it from afar as well, and that's fine. And you blood barrage like this. If you hit a pretty good barrage, switch to your better gear, start attacking. So you can tell this is a bit above like f standard first caper stuff. But the same ways uh, for like attacking pillars and NPCs and how you deal with things, it's the same. Lots of rigor, and I'm still prioritizing the blob. So try kill this bat. Flick some rigor here and there. And as the blob dies, same thing, you step in. And heal, if you need healing. Major usually survives. You're not going to get rigor on every single hit, but you want to get as many as possible. Rigor on here, rigor on here. And when this guy dies, you can try and attack the other one as well. Take a second hit to get ready for this barrage. If you can do this kind of thing, it's great. You can kill one of them, and then kill the other ones, then get ready and barrage. Because the blob takes a bit of time to die. Okay. I'm going to get through some of the early waves. They're not too interesting. It's going to be more about how we solve the later ones. Now it's melee only, so we can just pray melee and chill. One good barrage, 152 is dead. Let's burn one blowpipe spec on the melee. And we're going to flick Rigor and tank it. I'll start introducing some more complex flicks as well. Let's run over here. And we're using the melee as a pillar. So we're stepping basically from here to here, and letting the bat sit here, so we can attack it afterwards. You can also kill the bat now if you want to. Let's use some restore. Not a very good barrage. Let's come round and uh, use Rigor to clear up here. Now this bat is going to stop the melee from getting to me, so when it dies I've got to be aware of it. Trying to get these guys off the pillar. And again, maybe another blowpipe spec to try and clean up the melee a bit faster. Melees tend to be the thing that slows down your run massively. But nothing crazy about this, lots and lots of rigor usage. Go and be aggressive, kill stuff before it kills you. One barrage. And there's a blob, let's take a step back, send another one on the way behind the pillar, and then go after this guy. Lots of rigor once again. We're letting the blob drag in. Now I have this blob in the same position as always. It was, you're like, you know, practically the same as the first cape. One barrage, not bad. Mage break to finish up. So even in these runs, there's some very similar, well, there's some very big similarities. One barrage. Click the blob. Go for the bat. Flick the blob. Now, I'm in a bad place here. I've got to move back for the melee. I'm still trying to flick the blob. The attack hits me. Switch my prayer. Let's use Bofa to clear up over here. Get towards the blob and attack the blob. And now we know how to deal with blobs in the open. Stand here. More restore. I'm 102, so I can just Ice Barrage. Slightly higher kill potential, which is good. Let's go back on pillow. One barrage, lots of stuff over there, let's go behind the pillar. This part's no different from first games. Now let's attack some of the stuff over here. Gotta pray melee for the, the melee, of course. And this guy's coming towards North Pillar, his orientation tells me that. I can still bow for him, but I don't know where he's going based on that, if I'm not sure. Now instead of letting this blob come into the pillar, I'm gonna move towards it, and once again, stand up here. If you can get Aubrey on great, if not, don't worry. And again, keep looking for good. Okay, that's more or less all there is to it right now. Back on the pillar, one barrage. Let's run away from this guy and attack this guy once he's come round. We're gonna move in when he dies. 
Not a bad barrage. Let's switch our gear. This will drag us around the pillar, but that's okay. We're doing a speed run now, not a first escape. He dies. Let's step in and pray melee because the melee might come around the pillar. One good barrage. Nice. And now let's go for the melee. We're not on a first cape. Let's use blowpipe specs for speed. Doesn't matter if you miss. Looking rigor always for these guys. And more restore. Let's come to the center of the room. Pray melee. It's double melee now. Not a bad barrage. Let's clear up. And rigor on the killing melees. Okay. Ranger. Well, double nibbler. One good barrage. Not bad. Let's clear up with blowpipe. There's only a couple here. There we go. And we're into ranger a bit after seven minutes, which is very good. One barrage. Seems pretty good. Let's run over here. Both are on the way, maybe. Bit of damage. Into the blowpipe. And start one picking. All the rangers should be like this. They should be quite straightforward. Choosing DPS as a solution now. Definitely fine. Back we go. Lots of rangers on these waves, so let's keep praying range. One barrage. Not a very good one. Let's attack this bat and move towards these nibblers. Bring a run. And I'm going to clean up all these guys in succession, trying to chain them as best as possible. And then we can go on the ranger. What's my magic attack bonus? I don't know, but it certainly does not matter. One barrage, and let's go behind the pillar to let everything drag in. Attack this bat with the rigor, and come out and kill this guy on the pillar. Get rid of the bat since this one's frozen. Now we can kill the one that's frozen, and go to the ranger. Uh, Vams if you can have them. Vams are much better. Lovely. Now we have a ranger and a blob. Let's use some more restore. Let's hide for a second. Go to Nibbler safe spot. Get the Bofa out. Try and kill this guy. Same for this one. Now let's go meet these guys. If you can two tick like this, great. I'll do a little bit of two ticking and a little bit of alternating. You can also attack while this is going on. Switch your gear. Get the middle one. Rigor on. I'll do a bit of a mixture of both of them. Hard mode one. I don't think we're going to have much time to do hard mode today, unfortunately. We can do an entire day of hard mode top tomorrow, though. Okay, let's flick the blob. Come round and attack the ranger. We're letting everything drag in. By the time those guys are unfrozen, the ranger should be dead. Let's go work on the blob. If I take a step up, I can attack the bat. Click the blob. Oh, I can't. Garage. Get these guys. And we can sort them out. Okay, we can move up here. Bofa. Try and group them all together, and then go for a barrage. You don't have to stand anywhere in particular. There are good places to stand to make clumping happen, but it doesn't really matter. Just run back into them. And now we're 85 HP, we can use a blood barrage. And again, round the pillar, let the blob drag in. Kill this bat first, he's in the way. And all of our HP is coming from heals from blood barrage. Yeah, I can Bastion now, so we're 101 range. Let's finish this wave up. We can like blowpipe walk on the blob. You can uh, bow for it. You can bow for it while it dies as well, it's quite good. More prayer usage, always good. Lovely heal. Yeah, 100 range. Let's get back on pillow. And let's just hide for a second, just hide. We're gonna come out this way, let it drag him. Bastion usage, maybe a blowpipe kill. Blowpipe, blowpipe, 
Just trying to get the flicks in. And then stand up. And try and heal. Not bad. Now we kill this guy. Might not get the flicks, doesn't matter. Get what you can get. Try not to lose ticks on barrages. I'm going to lose one just every time to showcase that it's fine. Um, you can bofa. If you have chins, this is where you use chins, but bofa's fine. Lovely. Back on pillar. One barrage, and it's a melee. So let's actually go up and attack it. And once you start attacking, you can move back on pillar like this. Let's get as close to the ranger as possible by stepping three tiles out. And as when you see the XD drop for you think it dying, you can run across and start attacking. Fantastic. And all these waves of the melee should be quite simple. Most of them you just stand still. Let's kill this bat. Let's get this far nibbler before the melee gets too close to us. And then the close one, and then let's run away. Run away, run away! We're gonna get as close as possible, this tile is good. And we can chain the nibbler into the ranger. Nibbler, ranger, like this. So if you chase nibblers, you can't do that sometimes. Especially if you freeze them in the middle of the room, they're always accessible. Back on pillar. One barrage, pick the ground, don't get dragged out. The melee is stuck, let's use Rigger to kill it. When it dies, we can attack the bat behind it. Let's move across as far as we can. Ooh, careful. Got a bit too uh, ahead of myself. I might take a hit here, that's okay. Just run and kill it. You're tanky and you're on task. Let's go for the sniblet. A couple of melee hits isn't going to make or break a run. We have six brews for a reason. Eighty-three HP. Okay, took a bit of damage. Let's use restore and heal. Let's flick the blob and come around this way, running range, and alternate. Kill the melee. We know this side is very good for melee trapping. Can we get the nibbler. Yeah. Not a good deal. Let's put on Augury and try again. Much better. Back on pillar. Okay, let's move back a little bit. Give them some space to drag in. In times like this, when stuff is far away, you can always do like a bofa hit and run back and let it drag around the pillar. Ignore the blob hits and you get this like effect of bringing him round while damaging him and you can save spot him very easily from this side. It's a nice little trick for melees. With this blob, when we stand next to it, we got to pray range, because the ranger can see us. So we keep praying range. Barrage here. Better gear. And clean up with rigor. So that's the same trick from the first cape that's useful in a speedrun. And there's lots of those you can use. Let's use some more restore yet again. One barrage. Good. Kill the ranger. This is a great spawn. And we just want to take the victory. The bat's going to get to us. Which is fine. We can release it from the pillar safe spot and attack it. This melee might dig. We can take a hit from it by praying melee. We might take a hit from the blob, but that's completely fine. Now we can get back on tick with it. Bow pipe spec to try and get some good heals. Unlucky. You can do that on the bat as well. Keep attacking, keep attacking, move in. Not a bad barrage, let's try and clean up. Lovely. It's all just really fluid. Let's attack the ranger and alternate. We know blobs don't see us if we alternate. 
You can take this a step further and attack the thing behind it if you want to. If the melee was going towards you, just sit on pillar. Basically, as long as you can alternate on command, this kind of wave is free. There's no bats to mess with you. Now let's run over here to get that guy closer, because this guy dra uh, this, dragging this guy closer is really valuable and it will save you time. It's better to lose a couple of ticks and drag something closer than it is to uh, kill something and run from one side of the map to the other side. They're up with Brigger. And we're not going around the other side for this, because we just want to attack it immediately. Don't try and use the standard stuff, just like group it up and stand next to it. We're always taking maybe like a 10 damage on a wave, but we can always heal a 10 on a wave. So like this, we can just heal. 99. Let's trap the melees. This is Lana. This is a sub-65 Bofa. So this would assume you have maybe 5 KC, maybe 10 KC. So like things like this, off ticking melees, you're not going to be able to do it out of the blue, but if it's set up like that and you can run into it, it should be quite easy. Alternatively, kill it and then run to the fringe room. Nothing crazy about that. Double ranger, no need to be afraid, let's come up to the middle. Let's go attack this guy. Let's put Rigor on. And let's run over away as far as we can. Drag the other guy closer. Look, he's getting a lot closer. And now we can run up into him. And now we can attack one into the other. So if stuff is really far away, and it's got a lot of HP, you can take the time to damage it down. Works very well. We're about to enter Majors, and we've used up five restores. So we have another... We have more than double that to get through the waves, which is good. We can go and pick some of them up now. On Barrage, clean up. And now we have all of our restores ready to run. Singular Major, no reason to be afraid. From Barrage into our Bofa. And uh, if you can do it, you should one tick you flick your magic. So come in here and switch your prayer. I don't like doing this personally, but it is good. Can't venom them, I don't think. Yeah, if you can't one take, that's fine. Rigor on for the bat, don't be afraid. If you can try and get the off ticks for it, that's good. You can just flick like this. You, you can't venom them. If you could, it'd be meta, I think. But doing this is fine as well. Just gonna bow for this to kill it. When you kill mages, you want to be close to them. It actually saves time. When you're when you're one tile away, it'll be the fastest time to kill them. Let's go all the way back. I need to remember my quick prayers are wrong. So you can do this. But obviously the bats are going to hit you, so unlucky. Don't worry too much, though. Fantastic. Yo, Chaz, congrats on the cape, sir. Oh, very good news, oh, very good news. And we're getting a bit low here. Our range level is 101. Let's use a dose of Restore and another dose of Bastion. So we're just getting like super Bastion the entire time. Uh, we're 83 HP, so let's use a Blood Barrage. Gonna flick the Blob, get into our uh, slightly nicer gear to attack this with. Come around and attack. Yeah, you can, you can probably pot like 103, 104 with three of these. Doesn't really matter. Don't 
died three times in a row on 56. Unfortunate. Okay, we're gonna hide on this wave. Bring range. And from here. Trigger run, of course. I can bow for this guy. Bring mage, in case they get dragged. And let's come out. So we're giving them all time to drag, staying behind as long as possible. One thing if you're doing a bow for speed, you can attack at the same time. And if you have this on quick press, this is a really nice way to flick as well. I wouldn't intentionally set this up, but if you're on cycle, then great. Four attempts in made it to Zuck, that's awesome. Is that following any of the stuff I'm doing, or is that just doing your own thing? Because four attempts to Zuck is insane, mate. Alright, I don't know why I'm starting here, let's start up here. Bomb barrage, run! Range prey! And let's go. We're getting ready to attack Zuck from this side. And now let's go. Try it on your own? Sick! Yeah, you've already, you've already done solo TOA, so... Oh well, you've done 500, so you're fine. Alright, when this guy dies, I can send a bow for up here, get into my gear, and that will save you a bunch of time. Doing actions while this blob dies. 70 HP, let's use some more restore, and consider barraging. Let's use this uh, bofa and just alternate. We know blobs don't exist, as long as you're comfortable alternating, this is fine. gonna bow for this guy to death and then run up to him. Just so I can flick a bit more. Now I'm flicking the blob over there. That's bofa. You get close. And off we go. Again, you stand next to it when it dies. One barrage. Really nice, there's our HP back. The blobs are just HP positive in this now. Mage break. And now we have a melee. Let's go towards the Major. There are some really nice options here. Let's kill this guy. And let's come and stand back here. There's plenty of things. Obviously this Major is like a pillar. Um, so we can just keep it there. When it digs we can go back around and like path up here somewhere. And this is fine too. Doing Inferno Runs. Got Max here in 6 clears. Struggling to do Melee Don't Dig. Any advice? Kill them. It may sound simple, but kill them. So there's the dig, let's come back around and this is now fine. And when I mean kill them, I mean like... Take out your Akibo, and shoot them to death. Um, I can't really make it simpler than that. You really just have to click it, and it will die. You can take a bow and kill it as well, like, it, it doesn't matter what you do, just click it. Kill it before it kills you. This is a great spawn for speedruns. We can just attack. Ignore the nibbler on the pillow. It's like right now. Wait for the mage attack. And do this. Same as the first capes. Or just kill it again, like, I don't know. It's just kill it. Oh, of course, okay. We need both for that again. You can just blow by a bit, both or whatever, just get rid of it. We can even release the bat, and then use the melee to say spot it. Haha. 
and cool tactics. I didn't even mention it, but if you can Phantom Barrage, that's even more HP per wave, so you can do that too. Okay. If you're not on tick, kill the melee. How many people will he get? Nothing on the pillars, this is fine. Yeah, like 90% of this is just kill. Run behind, maybe try and flick the blob. I can send a Bofer at the blob, maybe? Get some damage on while I wait for the Major to drag in closer? Gonna better do a bit of two-taking. It's for a bit of fun. Measuring tile spacing is difficult. Best is practice. You really just need a bit of practice. You gotta get used to it, and more importantly, you have to try it. You have to try to off-tick them. And based on your experience, you'll be able to do it quite easily. But it's something that's very learned. But he also doesn't take long to get good, though. I can go and attack the major, or I can opt to do this. You can do this flick with the melee. You just go on, you start on melee, and you move up and down. And that will catch most of the blob hits. Same as, same as one tick alternating, you just go through the entire prayer book. You can even practice it on other NPCs. Yeah, if you can do it, it's good. Anyone at this stage doing sub-65 can easily do that. But usually it won't survive long enough for it to really matter, so... It catches 75% of lobbits. Okay, let's run behind the pillar. Erega run, and we use this drag to pull it in a bit closer, so we can attack it. If you want to get this nibbler off the pillar, go back, over, or go and blow pipe it at the risk of taking a blob hit if you're not careful. What do I do when the melee digs? These are the kind of waves where they're getting a bit more complex. I have a bofa, not a tiba, so the melee doesn't the major doesn't die too quickly. Let's stand here. Oh look, a safe spot. Add a thin air. Lob it, doesn't matter. We're gonna get the HP back. Let's go after the melee. One blow fight spec. Not bad. So, so, you know, you're not gonna get healers very consistently, but it will save you time healing, is the main thing. Let's attack the blob and move up into it. And we'll blob barrage this as well. I don't know how many ticks it is, maybe it's like seven, maybe, I don't know. Seven, eight. It's one of those things again, you'll get a feel for it. Pretty sure seven? I literally guessed seven if it is, that's sick. Okay, I missed the nibblers, I'm gonna leave them. If you ever miss the nibblers like that, just leave it. Don't chase them, no point. It's gone to South Pillar. If it went to North Pillar, I could deal with it. Instead, I'm going to go and DPS the Major. Sometimes it happens. Uh, the answer is still use Ring of the Gods. Lightbearer is abysmal. 
Let's set up a melee dig. Should have done that a bit earlier. If you're focusing on the run, you can do it a bit better. You can even keep alternating until it starts to attack. There we go. Finish with Blowpipe. More Restore. And we actually do not want South Pillar. Let's throw a Bofa hit in. Remember, we do not care about South Pillar. There's a lot of NPCs here. Let's send a Barrage. Melees. Let's duck behind the pillar. And let's do some damage. I only really want to kill the one that's right here next to me because I can safe spot the other one. But this one I can't really safe spot. If you're comfortable off ticking, by all means off tick it. But it's pretty quick to kill. I'm level 100 range. Let's consider using Bastion Pot. And actually, I can use maybe a Divine Dose now because we're going to get into these waves where we have a, uh, a Ranger. And it's going to take a lot of blood piping to kill it all. And it's just nice because they're simple waves. Melee digs, maybe one more attack behind pillar. Let's clear up here. I want that pillar to fall, good. There goes 50, fantastic. Remember, 50 dies. I want it to die before 50, that's good for us. We can let this melee come round. Try to keep it in place. Or just kill it. And we've used, uh, what was it, five restores to get here? So, chilling, really. Wiki says 6 ticks. Might be 60. Might be 60. You get, a, you get a feel for it. How bad is Ring of Suffering? Ring of Suffering is completely fine. Ring of the Gods is just better, in my opinion. Right, one barrage. And now we can come all the way back to Nibla's safe spot. The Ranger will see me from this distance. Let's get both of them. Let's come up to Pillar. And attack from the back here. This is usually a good way to deal with these. You come around the east side, and the east side of thinking is very strong. If Pillar lives post wave 50, majors that spawn up there will see you on this tile. If the Pillar is not there, majors will not see you on this tile. They are very big and clunky. They get dragged around the Pillar, and it's bad. It also encourages people to want to run to their Pillar and save it. So in short, let it die. Would I ever do a pure run? I don't own a pure. I'm not really interested in pures, I'm afraid. We're using Sea Shield for this run and putting Crystal Top on. One Barrage, let's switch into our Bofa gear. Try and make sure we're in range and then go for the hit. At this stage in your uh, Inferno career, you should be aware of how to deal with this. It's Step back here, back NPC. And you can flick this a variety of ways, like this. Two ticking it. It's fine. Dragon Bone is very silly. And the reason why it is silly is because if you've... Maybe you just joined, but if you watch the runs today, you'll notice that I am, I'm taking this gear, Ring of the Gods and Boots, and I get my Anguish, which is a massive DPS upgrade. And I finish the run with maybe three to four restores. Oh, I forgot I'm... Okay, for the sake of my own sanity, I'm not going to use Mage Quick Prey because uh, I'm not used to it. I'll just die, so... Okay, one Barrage. Into our gear. And we're not going to kill the Ranger, we're waiting for this bat to close in on us, so we can kill the bat. We're just DPSing something, so we're attacking something and getting some damage going. Now we can pray Mage and kill this one. And we can walk over to these Nibblers and kill them too. It doesn't matter if we take a bit of damage from the bat, completely fine. Take a step back, hee <laughs> hee. That was close. Both is great for just clearing up the bats like that. It's not as good as pipe, but it's just fast. Thank <laughs> you. 
And again, a bit like first caping, we're not worried about sitting on 80 odd HP. We can use the start of the wave, or we're going for the defense if you're really low, and send a barrage. Let's off tick these two. one bow for I forgot how strong this thing is. It's always the middle one. So we always pre-switch. Our divine is running out, let's divine again. This is a nice bit of two tick tech. If not, just alternate. Both of cycles are so nice. clean up a pipe because usually the major just tends to survive but it doesn't matter too much thank you Ron. one barrage let's pray range for this guy and kill the bat just stand still and let it approach you otherwise you'll get dragged out okay bat's dead let's have a think about this stack wait for the attack and then move and you can two tick this you can one tick alternate doesn't matter These both of cycles are so nice, look. It's like one ticking. I wish Tebow was four tick like that. Make life so easy. Super cozy here. Yeah. It gets you into that kind of like style of flicking. It's really nice. Let's move around this, maybe attack the bat from the back. And hit him with the one tick. Gotta have some fun with these. Okay. One barrage. Uh, let's quarter trap the ranger and flick these guys. I'm just gonna take a second. And we're gonna kill the ranger. Actually, we can step over here. So pray ranger. Get the ranger. And now begin alternating. So when waves get a bit complex like that, have a think. If in doubt, do some damage. But ultimately, if you can get to the, range, uh, the major first, great. In that scenario, killing the ranger outright and then going east of North Pillar would have been completely fine as well. It doesn't really matter what we do. Take a break from one tick alternating, go and attack the ranger, and then get the cycle on this tick here. So you take maybe two blob hits, that's fine. Make it really simple. Those were the late blob hits, we're still on tick. And don't worry, we're low HP, we can use brew. Let's use a couple of doses brew. These guys are attacking together, more or less. Oh, not quite, Jesus. One ice barrage for this, flick this guy. Clean up here. And let's uh, use a dose of Bastion. I've got 143 on the time, so that's okay. You look like you would make a mean beat. Not a bad barrage, but we're back to 99, that's all that matters. If I get into these later waves, and especially if you're not going very fast during your run and you want to keep the pace up, GM, how is the moth puppy doing? Whenever you get low, just brew. Let's corner trap the ranger and get ready to off-tick it. 
Just like that. I can even come round. There's only a there's only a melee here. And now I can get control of the melee. Hippo, thank you for the three months. Moth puppy. <laughs> Moth is in the fridge and will be there until probably February. So a long, long time. But Moth is very happy. Let's tank some melee hits. You can even sit here and uh, just do this. Same as the first capes. Just getting control of melees is very important. Why would I believe? It's incentive, man. It's incentive. Just showing how easy Inferno is. Lovely. We're going to try and keep one dose of Divine for Zerk. As these waves get into the later ones, we're going to use a bit more Augury on wave starts. Let's pull the Major in closer. I'll pray range just in case. And when the Major gets close enough, let's go around the pillar, praying Major and kill the bat. Now let's go after the Major. We can even clean up the Nibbler from here. It's within range just about, which is fine. I want to formulate a plan for when the melee digs. What I can do is I can step one out. Alter, uh, well, I can deal with these guys and then step back in. Let's use another Divine Bows. Let's get ready to off-tick. Bit late. But I got the off-tick, so let's use it. The act of off-ticking, and this is a rule as you go further down the chain of Inferno speedruns, the rule of off-ticking early is quite important. The earlier you off-tick, the more control over the wave you have. Ooh. Smart. Um, if you do it early, it generates the ability to move to something while under control of where you move. So by getting this ranger on tick ahead of time for the for the for the melee dig, it meant that I could move over here whenever I wanted, instead of having to sit here and wait for the melee to do something. So in general, if you're not sure, on tick on tick stuff earlier than po earlier or as early as possible. The earlier you do it, the more control you have, the comfier, cozier time you'll have during runs, and it's a good skill anyway. Uh, I'm not going to be too worried about these guys. Let's just go attack the Major. When you get to like the likes of sub-50 and beyond that, you want to be off-ticking stuff like as soon as possible. Um, if you have control of like four NPCs on the wave, then you can move anywhere you want, and it doesn't matter. But for these kind of like sub-65 runs, if you can just get control of two NPCs, great. Let's uh, put on some gear. Do a Mirage. Probably not enough to kill it, but that's fine. It is. Lovely. Servers? Holy fuck. Okay, we're lucky. You can just brew if I get hit. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of options. But the thing is, you don't you don't want to avoid off-taking. If you avoid off-taking, you'll never get better at the game. Let's do one attack and just wait and have a thing. This is the one of wait this is one of the few waves you want to wait to see what goes on. There's some really interesting tech with splash off decking here, but to be totally honest, I'm gonna go kill the blob. Oh, hello. Okay. I didn't expect that to be honest. It looks like by standing here I can see the major. Let's kill the melee. Some things you learn by testing and experience. Melee might be dead. Boom. Hello, Flemmy. So, if at any time the melee digs on me, I can just go behind the pillar. But as long as I'm aware... Oh, careful me. As long as I'm careful of my timing and I see what's hitting me, I can react to it. Let's come around and kill the melee. It respawns, so let's get control of it. Or not. Every time. Want to be a bit careful here. Let's duck behind the pillar. And then we can clean up. And I'll send a uh, two weight with a blood barrage and a phantom to try and get some more HP. There's 91, there's 99. So phantoming at the end of waves is really nice. One barrage, and we know by default this is an off-tickable spot. So let's get ready. Lovely. Let's move around. And I'm going to get some damage on the ranger while I wait for the major to pull in. And now I can alternate. Or two tick, whatever. 
But it was comfy. One more barrage, not a very good one. Let's come around the pillar. Catch and with the melee. And now we can flip comfortably for a second. The death animation of the ranger was... Uh, the melee was blocking me, so I went around the other side. Those are brew. Those are restore. Might take a hit here, that's okay. Let's pray range for this guy while we deal with him. And then melee when this guy gets close. My last dose of divine is running out in about 15 seconds, so if I if I use one now, I'm gonna waste it. So let's just chill and kill stuff. There goes the pillar, we didn't really care about it anyway. And it looks like going this side, the blob and the major will see me, so let's go click the major. And set up an off tick or a two tick, whatever it is. Now we can bastion. As we know with the respawn things, we can just click it. And if I want to, in case the melee redigs, I can set up an off deck for the melee, or a trap, ahead of time. Just to alleviate some of the effort. The more you think about it, the more you do it, the easier it all gets. Not going to be afraid of the ranger, let's step out into it. No need to lose the ticks. Four Brion, loads of prey. Want the defense. That's prey range. And again, we know this is off tickable. This spot just makes everything off tickable. We don't have to worry. Nibbler on the pillow. Uh, I'm gonna literally gonna like do this, which is a bit silly, but it's fine. <laughs> and now, oh, okay, we'll kill the blob now. Let's use a blood pipe speckle too. You can get away with funny stuff like that, just fine. Yeah, I mean, after the major dies in these waves, it's just clean up. Quick stuff, kill it. The same as always. One barrage, and we again, we, we know this melee is off ticked, so we just stand still. How good is that? Now, if the other melee digs, might be a problem. How do you know it is? It just is. It's not about how you know. You, you know because you, you know because I tell you, and because I know because someone told me. Now, in this case, I'm just gonna try and kill it. Aha, let's step under. Tactics. Now I've trapped this guy. Poor guy. Um... But yeah, I, I don't. It's just how the distance works out. Yeah. It, it's one of those things like um, you you see it work, 
and someone tells you from the Inferno Speeds community that this is a thing you can do, and every time you try and do it, it will work, because distance works, or that's how the mechanics works. If you really want to find out like how some of the stacks pull up and how blob mechanics work, that's the really cool stuff, but that also requires you to like want to super care about it, I guess. Usually the answer is, it works and that's sick, so perfect. Let's use a blow pipe spec to get some HP back. Let's go to our standard position starting here. We're going to move out from here to here. And you can move up. So you don't have to alternate from there. You can always move once you're in control. As long as you're standing there, with any major or ranger spawn, it's off tickable. Finish with the low pipe. If you're standing here, you're gonna die. <laughs> but if you're standing here, it's completely fine. It's just a natural optic. And as long as you're standing still the or you're aware of that and you keep the damage going with the other things, nothing's a problem. Alright. Uh, let's just start on our propagator, rigor on. And again, we have like what, five restores, four and a half restores? So we can just sip restore until the end of time. Let's use this pillar to drag them closer. Middle tile is death tile, yeah. You can't go there. Thirteen minutes left, we're fine. This is without chins, without speeding stuff up and yeah. I am now AFK. With this amount of restore, I'll have to I'll have to use a little bit of flicking, but only a little bit. I probably don't have to flick, to be honest. I'll also try killing at the same time. I'm 105 range. Let's uh, use a Bastion here. It's going to carry through Jazz and stuff. This is nice level. I'm going to use pipe to finish this guy. And hopefully it doesn't respawn. Uh, we have an excess of brew and restore and everything, so I would like to brew at some point, but it doesn't matter too much. You can also just send like a blowpipe spec on Jads and it's honestly fine. The mechanics for doing Jad don't really change at this level of speedrun. So it really is just click the boss, do it exactly the same as the first cave, keep rigor on, Click rigor if you want to. Um, and obviously you're on task, so it'll be a bit smoother. Don't want to go to your way? Nope. Who really does? Grab a barrage for the corner, that's really good. Get this guy. We can group them. This strat works well. Even for early on speedruns, this is completely fine. Okay, maybe a barrage here, see if we get lucky. We do! Not that I don't think it matters, but hey. Rigor run. Safe place as always. I guess I can showcase the flicking. So if you're comfortable doing flicks, you can do this. Pray and then two ticks melee. This mitigates a lot of damage.
All right, let's stand it. Don't do it on first capes, though. I I've seen first capers do it, actually. If they have good tick timing, it's not like unfeasible to do it, it's just tricky. Yeah, I mean, Zuck is no more than about four to five minutes. Oh, Christ. Uh, okay. I just misclicked like hell, so. Continuing the theme of being chanced once per run. Today, at least. Two healers on me, stand back one tile. One six them. <laughs> Great time to comment. I mean, what can you do? If you died or a mistlick, you died or a mistlick. Even any, any good gamer dies like that, too. Unlucky. Probably should have eaten a brew, but hey. Alright, last shift. At this point in time, not a bad idea, it's just brutal. 115. Or a restore. And the last Bastion does should carry through to the end of Zuck. With any luck. I'm gonna showcase another type of safe spot, which is like this. You can do this on both sides, like here and here. Same as a pillar. Just don't forget the pre melee. Lovely. So, three restores going in is like infinite. Uh, so, click boss should be fine. And we're at like 58 minutes, so we have 7 minutes to complete, which is completely fine. We need about 5 of that, if that. And we're going to kill everything. Um, you can even kill Jad and it should be fine. And again, we have the whole stamina, so let's just pot now. Dragging our supplies to a place where we can see them and use them a bit better. And if you have a couple of KC, like 5 KC by the time you go do this, you should be able to move pretty, pretty well at this point. Cry, I need to fucking stop there. It's left side here, so I can showcase the off tick. Off ticking sets is really simple. All you have to do is tag them one after the other with blowpipe. Without specking. Let's put Mage Prey on here. Major, then the Ranger. And I'll be on a nice cycle. Back on Zuck. That wasn't exactly clean either, but it's... It works no matter when the set spawns as well. As long as you tag them like that with pipe, no specs, always off to. The goal is under 600. Yeah, the, the, the projectile is delays it by one tick if you're more than one tile away from it. And it can cause it to off tick it badly. Might even be two ticks delayed. Alright, there's 600. Time to kill the major. I found out the hard way. I was on a speedrun and like, oh, I'll just spec it for some HP. Nope, dead. Yeah, this is on task. I, I, it's it's perfectly doable to do it off task, even with this kind of gear on both of them. But you do want to do it on task at the end of the day. There's no reason not to. If you're doing it for CA. Okay, Jazz next. Range prey up ahead of time is completely fine. We have infinite stem, so let's use some stem. Notice we never take off rigor, like ever. Flip in that camera as normal. And you definitely don't have to kill Jad. But on a Bofa Cape, if you got the time for it, why not? We've done a few Jad skips before, so I figure I'll uh, show that it's possible to do this. Now you cannot tag the healers from here. Gotta wait for the Zuck attack. And now we can go, see how we're gonna get dragged like that. You'll die if you're not careful. 
So be careful. But whenever you do on task, you shouldn't have to kill Jen. But if you're not comfy doing it, if you haven't done that CA at this point, not a problem. Fifty-three seconds left on our divine. Can Chad die, please? Thank you. Okay. Let's get nice and potted up. Two thirty-nine is the uh, threshold. Let's get it nice and low. If we hit really well, we can proc it from the side. If not, probably next side. Both is pretty consistent, so it's quite likely. Okay, let's be careful now. That's 266. I can't attack it anymore, otherwise it's going to proc. 16 seconds on my Divine, so I'm probably going to have to use my Bruise and my Divine during healers. That's okay. Let's wait for it to get into the corner. And now attack. You can even attack it here. Okay, that's about as far as you want to go for this kind of run. Now I can get time to heal, which is fine. We're perfectly ahead of time. 115. I can turn on my Preserve. I can use my Potion. It's hit the corner, let's try again. I'll, I'll do one more. Okay, I'm just unlucky then. Three hits per side is completely fine. You can always bow for these two and then blowpipe these two, or blowpipe then bow for. This is just how it is, isn't it? Hits the side, start working on it. Come on, Bofa. That'll do. And now we stick to the shield. And just blow by walk our way to victory. Right click as much as you can if you're good with right clicking. And Bofa from the corner is really good. Both is really good for healers. Gotta be careful to stay with the shield. Let's use a blow pipe spec. Oh, crazy. Okay. Correct gear on. Back on bus. And now all we gotta do is stay with shield. I'd recommend brewing to absolute full. If you get hit by Zuck, it'll increase your chances of surviving massively. Make sure you got preserve on. And from here on out, especially on task, it's not likely we get a second set. If we do, we can deal with it, we got the brewers. All you have to do to get cape is be careful on shield, and time is about a minute off, so should be fine. I have got a minute to get it, so I, I left it a bit slow. But I'm going to keep the DPS up, so should be fine. I might not get it, actually. <laughs> That'd be quite funny, actually. The sub-65 that isn't quite there. I might even go for the bow light spec. Thirty seconds. Surely it doesn't troll me for twenty seconds. I think we're fine. Forty-four. Twenty seconds. Oh, don't do this. I'm still calling it a sub sixty-five, even if it doesn't hit. Ten seconds. Surely. There we go. It counts. Perfect. Seven seconds off. So timed it just about right. There we go. <laughs> it's about as close as it can get, I think. Yeah, if you want to save time, don't do a jad skip. Use more rigor. Take some better gear. Perfect timing. Good, good, good. I was looking at jads being careful, like, hope this is fine. Alright. So yeah, 